author, and authority, Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. The choice is going to make get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Tina Grant? That's right. <clears throat> Man, Ball Brian. You are the dumbest person alive. What is wrong with you? The nicest guy in the world, Joel Doesn't McHale. Sound like it. Uh-huh. He is such a sweetie. Ran into him a couple of weeks ago. Always just the best. Always in a great mood. Always sweet. Always accommodating. And super funny. I wonder if he's going to have any new word from your dad when he's here. Oh, did he play the trumpet? That's right. Um, through the mouthpiece. That's right. If he speaks to you. That's right. You got to remind me to uh, oh. interview my dad through Joel McHale playing the mouthpiece. It'll be uh, two shows in a row with guys who play their <laughs> That's right. palms That's right. on the show. Um, we have, oh, do we have a mouth? Do we have a mouthpiece? Here? Yeah, yeah, I have one. Oh, oh. Uh, I thought he played it through his hand or something. No, he no, he physically... actually plays, he oh. actually can play it through the actual mouthpiece. Well, he good. did for many years do his hand, but we've evolved. Yeah. We've yeah. evolved. Well, good. We have an actual mouthpiece, and good. So we'll coach him up on that before he comes in. Uh, also, we uh, it's funny. These guys have come in here, and we're like, dance, monkey. Do your fart noises. <laughs> Play that mouthpiece. They like it. Uh, so I've long thought about this particular fellow, and you guys tell me. This isn't an individual. It's, it's a type of guy. Okay. There's are types. There's guys who wear sandals with black socks, you know? Wow. You, you kind of go, Indeed. why? But then there's another part where you go, I don't know, maybe you got a chafe or blister or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's his business. But they're, they're just people who do certain things. Order, go to Subway and order seafood-based mm-hmm. sandwiches yeah. and things like, who are these people? And I've always told you about the dates guy. The date, the guy gives the dates out are usually blowhardy, and they're usually sober. Okay. And so when when you you talk to them, they go, I had my last drink March 22nd, 1997. I buried my son January 26th, 1987. And it's always like, I know you, I'm not sure you're punctuating everything with a date. And maybe it's me, because I'm jealous, because people Mm go, when did you guys start the man show? I go, I don't know. Google it. Yeah, uh, somewhere same. 90s, late 90s. Well, it was man show and then love line. When did you start love line? I go, uh, mid 90s, later 90s. I, I never like March 28th, no, no 1997, clue. you know, and but they're usually blowhardy guys and they like to punctuate everything with the date mm-hmm. they buried their dog or their son or they had their last drink or something. Yeah. Now it also it also means it must repeat the story a lot because yeah, it's committed if, to memory. If you yeah. didn't repeat it, you'd forget the forget the date. <laughs> it's very Grandpa Simpson. The year was nineteen dickety six. So um, we had a guy, a guy I, I met, a guy I like. So we did Carcast uh, yesterday, and the guy we had on was named George. And George is an interesting guy. He builds Porsches. He races motorcycles. He was the guy who they got who, and then they, the story goes back and forth. So I try to try to remember, but uh, I think it was the story of um, Rob Paul Newman got hold of him and said, "I need an old junker Porsche to." Oh no, Robert Redford got hold of him and said, "I need an old junker Porsche." That's to, an oxymoron. To put in just an, the old shell of a bad. Well, this is in the seventies when they weren't worth that much, and I want to just put it in the middle of. Paul Newman's yard and he's having a party and that'll be funny. And then it was, and then Paul got the car and then Paul had a crush down into a cube. And then he put it in the entryway of Redford's rented home. And it's kind of chronicled in the documentary about, uh, these guys were cut ups. They like to bust each other's chops and have fun. Butch and do fun things hijinks. Like that. That's yeah. right. So this guy, George came on and Matt and I were interviewing him and he is now there's certain guys they're of a certain age usually of a certain skin tone these are white guys who are a little bit older Mm -hmm. and they're oftentimes car guys and what they do is they drop names but they're not name droppers because you've never heard Mm. of any of these people (laughs) and so what they do my friend tim 
Yeah. Little they, kids do that. They tell a story. And they'll go, yeah, this car, uh, I had a 72 uh, 911T that uh, got breathed on by uh, Frosty Baker and uh, Dutch, uh, Dutch, Mc, uh, Dutch McAllister. These guys worked on the car. And they, everything has a name on it, but they're not names you would know. Yeah, it doesn't it, move the story along. And, and listen, you want to talk about hanging out with Dan Gurney at the track. Oh, okay, I got you. That's a I got good, time. That's a name. I got that one. But every car has a name of the guy they sold it to, and then the name of the guy that guy sold the car to, and the name of the guy he sold that car to. And it always just stops the story because inevitably they can't think of the guy's last name. Mm-hmm. But it'd be like if I said, so anyway, let me tell you this story about uh, getting a slice of pizza. I go in, get myself a slice of pizza. There's three guys behind the counter. One guy's name is Gus Stumberg. The other guy's name, but but it doesn't really factor into the story. Mm-hmm. The story is I got a slice of pizza. You're not name dropping. You're no name dropping. Right, right. So uh, I was laughing about it. I don't know why, but when I, mean, I was driving in and I said, Chris, just get George. And I'll preface oh, this no. by saying how much I love this guy. Great he's guy. A good, he's a good guy. And but he's better than me. I can't remember any of these, of the names of the guys that whatever. But what I'm saying is, is, when I'm telling a story and it has to do with Jimmy Kimmel, I'll go, and that guy, that guy's name was Jimmy Kimmel. But sometimes I'm talking about Les, the guy who works on the Dotsons, and I just go, I know a guy, so yeah. he's, a, he's in San Diego, I got, I got my car from him, because it kind of slows down. Yeah. Anyway, I told Chris, just listen to that episode and put together a super montage <laughs> of name dropping. Now again, double preface, I like George. I just oh, thought this Imagine is going to be. Imagine if him. Well, it's not really a bad quality. No. It's, it's actually better than I. I it's couldn't... a trait we're familiar with. Right. So uh, it, here we go. What is uh, What was the livery on the 917? It was brand new. I purchased it in parts from the factory. And uh, Dick Reventlow, who's sure. Lance Reventlow's brother, and he said, well, he says, oh. I just bought my RSR from Frau Bear." <laughs> the engine I bought through Alwyn at uh, Andile and okay. uh, Randy Townsend when he had wrecked – no, Willie Cowson in Europe wrecked a 917, and I got the parts because the factory had called Pollock and Stoddard, and uh, Hobbs drove it at uh, Sears Point. I took it down to show Peter Gregg. He was interested in buying it. The guy who won was Chris – Almond, Amon, mm-hmm. and I have a good friend, uh, uh, Gary Fairbanks. He says, oh, yeah, the bike that I was riding, I bought from Al Lauer. And then, I raced against the Basque brothers. They were back then. They had a welding shop. Frank Jarman in Rockford, Illinois, and mm-hmm. the dealership was owned by a guy, Morell. I don't remember his first name, but his wife's okay. name was Diana or oh, Deanna or something like that. God. You remember the kids' names? <laughs> I had to slide in a little, a little jab there. If this was a drinking game, we'd all be shit faced. <laughs> I know. Now again, it's a thing, and it's a thing amongst car guys a lot, mm-hmm. and amongst guys of a certain age. Mm-hmm. But I don't. And is it? Is it? Is are they? Are they close cousin to the dates guy? Because the dates guy is blowhardy. This isn't blowhardy. No, this is more this informational. Is yeah. A footnote. I do like when the guy, when that guy references, uh, uh, the, he was this guy, a brother of this equally obscure guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the brother. Yes. I, I think it's kind of sweet. It would be tough for an hour to have the enthusiasm. <laughs> it was only 25 but, minutes. But, but it's, yeah. it's a, it seems sweet where the dates one does seem blowhardy. I think when you're immersed in a world, like I love movies. I do. I see a lot of movies. I do a lot of research. And I'll you know casually just like, oh, yeah, Taika Waititi directed. Blah, blah, and you look at me the blanks. So like, Who the fuck is that? Because normal people, I don't think, know that name. That's just not a name that's known by most people. Yeah, but to me, it's like, oh yeah, the guy who did Hunt for the Wilder People. It, it's inside, yeah. A couple of them, like Lance Reventlow's brother, is <laughs> Reventlow is from Revlon, 
oh. fortune, oh. and he feel free to throw that in next he time. He built the he built a car called the Scarab, mm. and Shelby bought his shop. So there's a little recognition. Peter Gregg's, you know, there's a couple names sprinkled in there. It it definitely seems to be the age seems to be relevant because there's a little crossover with the Jewish mother. Mm. With the names or the mm-hmm. older mother, mm-hmm. she's like, "Who are we talking about? I don't know her." Yeah, she Susie's went to I mean, the bake sale. What bake sale? Well, yeah, it's a, it's, it's interesting, and I guess what it is is there's a thing that you learn through being on radio or doing enough three and a half minute hits on whatever news outlet that you realize. Your metronome is like tick, 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 tick. There's no time for any extraneous, any sidebar. I can't think of that person's name. Like, it's just, Move on. It, it's just moving. It's shark, yeah. shark through the water. There is a formula to the economy of context. Yes. You know what I mean? If I'm talking about my brother or whoever, I've got to give the, the right amount of context that makes sense for that conversation. Yeah, the right amount of context. That's right. Some people need little to know to none because they know and other people need it. Um, I was uh, thinking about this the other day as I was thinking about uh, kids all sitting around rotting, playing video games mm-hmm. and staring at their screens and phones all day. Um, you want a, past your son? A big, <laughs> yes, a big I'll, I'll tell you something about Sonny. The dude walks. He walks three <laughs> hours. Abides. He walks three hours a night, man. <laughs> I mean, he 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 does not sit around and stare at the video games. He does st- sit around and stare at the video games, but then he but hits then. the trail, man. Lone Wolf McQuaid, and he just wow. circumnavigates the neighborhood, and he's gone for two to three hours at a time just walking. Are we talking about near dark? He's not plumbing a coup, is he? He, uh, he... Has probably passed Mark and or Paulette Gergos, who are out on separate um, satellite tours where they circumnavigate. I mean, nobody, Mark's out of town a lot, but his wife is walking, man, and Sonny is walking, and they just pass by each other all the time. I just want to make sure I got this clear before I uh, really go uh, both barrels on you, Corolla. Mm. Are you telling me... At night. Okay. So you're saying you let your little boy, your cherub, the apple of your eye, your namesake out that door when the sun sets to do whatever and be surrounded by whoever two to three hours a night. Did I hear that correctly? Yeah, he goes out Nancy grad at, you know, he'll, go, he'll leave at 930, 10 9 at night. 930 at night? That's peak predator hours. Peak predator hours. True. And he'll just walk and walk and walk. But surely you have him tracked. You know how you can do it on the cats at the rescue. You can now do that with your kids. Oh, yeah. And if you don't have that, maybe you just keep a device on them, of course. Olga has a, tr- a tracking device oh, on her well, phone. Well, there's somebody I, thinking in this house. Thank God. I did not download that. I Can't did. You track them, I did. This brings me to <laughs> a weird, a weird question, and I have no idea how it works. But when I was getting my hair cut two days ago, there was uh, ladies talking, and one had found a dog and, <laughs> and and taken the dog and was looking for the owner of the dog, and then said this: the dog had a chip. They brought the dog in to the vet. The vet said, oh, it's got a chip. No information on the chip. What? And I was like, I didn't want to. Feels like the basic. I, the I didn't want to. I don't want to get that. Sometimes you don't want to get involved no. with conversations about people's dogs that could slow the whole process down a bit. Mm-hmm. There's nothing. I've made the mistake of popping off and I see whoever's cutting my hair, their hands drop yep. down and they start talking yeah. and I'm like, oh no, Keep no, going. no. Back Plan, up. I talk, you snip, baby. <laughs> but yes, scan the chip, no info. And I was like, how does this work? The dog wasn't born with a chip. Who puts a chip in and then goes, oh, come back in a mm-hmm. week and give me the official particulars. Like, is Never it all in the chip? I, I've never heard of that. Is this a possible thing, Chris? I know I know nothing. It sounded sort of feasible, but not really plausible. Like the dog had a chip with no information on it. Did they stand too close to a microwave and it got erased? Yeah, a twelve-year-old dog. I that doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I didn't want to engage. That's for the best. Smart. Uh, we also have. Um, Oh, so anyway, kids outdoors doing things. So he literally comes back at midnight? He could. Wow. He's just out. He just Good. walks. He'll be fine. Um, Is he a werewolf? The, uh, 
yeah, he'll usually come a little earlier than that. Now he's hanging with his, his dude friends and, and all that. But uh, something I never really talk about, but as a kid, tree climbing was a huge part of my childhood. Oh, yeah. Huge, huge, big deal. Lots of climbing of trees. Tons of tree climbing. You couldn't just pass a tree you know, no. to see if you could climb it. There is zero tree climbing today. And, and I realize... The tree climbing was sort of the the ultimate Reese's peanut butter cup of my family, my childhood, which is no money, no equipment, you know, no skis, no rackets, no balls, no nothing. You must go outside and you must entertain yeah. yourself. And when you're nine and rambunctious, that's about the best way to entertain yeah. yourself because there has to be a danger factor involved. You have to try to get up yeah. to a higher branch. <laughs> to a snappable and, branch. Yes. And kind of dare yourself to shimmy up and make up and all that. But then I also thought it, it, it's such a great, fertile, teachable moment in a young person's mind, which is you re- you have to explore your sort of physicality mm-hmm. and your abilities, but you also have to really figure out where the real danger, mm-hmm. you know, where the th- where the excitement ends and mm-hmm. the and the danger begins, mm-hmm. you know, and because you will break your arm and or kill yourself if you really want to go too hard mm-hmm. and and too high, and you're really always kind of testing the limits. And we're talking about when we've had Jordan Peterson on here before, and he says. Rough housing that we're trying to discourage all forms of rough housing because uh, Gillette doesn't like uh, toxic masculinity. masculinity. Boys really test themselves by rough housing because th- there's a very fine line between rough housing and an actual fight. Yes. And it's not 50 percent. In my world with my friends, it was about 4%. It was like between what we were doing to each other and full bald fist up Donnie Brook front of a nightclub throwdown. Like it was pretty there, but just not that last, you know, you had to temper it just a little bit. Like dogs. Yeah. And then you kind of learn that. Ability yes. that, and, but it, but it must be worked. It must be honed, and that's how how we do it. And now this epidemic of everyone feeling like I was attacked, or I was threatened, or I felt scared, or I didn't, you know, it's all such bullshit because no one is calibrated anymore because right. they weren't climbing trees and they weren't roughhousing and they weren't wrestling. So now we have just a big bowl of pussies who don't who think someone putting their hand on their shoulder and saying you can't go in there is an assault or words. You know, silence is violence. Like they're, they're really they're, the calibration is all fucked up. Even COVID, you know, mask up in between bites and stuff like they, they, they're not able to they're not calibrated anymore. Yeah, no, those, you're absolutely right. Those are things we all did instinctively to calibrate, mm. like get up on the roof. Can you <laughs> jump? Can you jump on the lawn and like do a shoulder roll? You wouldn't do it on the second story, but the the porch uh, over the carport that's a little lower. And you know something that goes along with that in your case for sure. I can name a thousand examples. You said a good healthy amount of peer pressure. You yes. may not have done it on your own, but you would have done it if your friends were with you. Well, then you get to the point where you become the friend who does the stupid shit, and the friends don't even do it. They encourage you to do oh, it yeah. because you're you the become the guy. <laughs> you're like Mikey. He'll eat anything. It's funny when you talk about that, like with Jordan Peterson. I absolutely 100 percent subscribe to that. And I've been roughhousing with my stepson since he was two years old. And I've noticed something now that he's just about seven. What he does when we're doing Butter. it. <laughs> yes, and no, Jesus. Um, he's he's constantly doing something a little aggressive and then looking at me to see my response. Yeah, and I give no response. Yes. I don't want him to think I'm hurt or I'm scared or I'm mad. I just want to keep you know playing. Uh, agreed. Look, we do it for a reason. We're we're now at the point in society where. Gillette is trying to talk young kids out of doing things that young kids have always done. We recognize it in the animal kingdom where the young bucks are going at it and scrapping. And even in uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Sure. Remember, they'd be hitting the antlers to see who the lead reindeer was. But anyway, all right. So we've come undone as a society. Chris says uh, the chip has to be registered online. 
uh, so it's or it's the, useless. So the so they implant it, and if the owner doesn't go the second step by putting in the account, it's it doesn't make any difference. Yes. Oh my god! Use your artificial well, heart. Maybe sure maybe the vi- yeah, <laughs> register. Yeah. Well, maybe the person who installed it too can do it, but it has to be confirmed that it's wow. in, that it's in the online registry. And then sometimes the scanners they need to be universal or backwards compatible and things Oy. like that. But but it's really really rare that you get the no information on a chip, but it can happen. Wow. I was thinking about that commercial for Life Cereal I grew up watching, which is again was a big part of my childhood. Was just commercials. <laughs> Oh, Mikey won't eat it. Mikey doesn't like anything. He likes it. Hey, Mikey. Like, that's what we just go to school and then. Mikey likes it. And we yell, he likes it. Hey, Mikey. I, oh, oh, I can't believe I ate the whole thing. We just repeat whatever we heard from commercials, all the entertainment we had. But Life Cereal, which when I was a kid was being pushed as your kids want this sugary, breakfasty junk. But if you could get them to eat life, oh, they that, could be that's, healthy. Uh, that's the healthy Healthy option. and strong. That thing must have Vinny would never stop throwing up if no, you read him no. the ingredients to life, right? Yeah, it's just it's just wheat cartridges with a little little like sweet nugget inside and and sugar tons. Yeah, of, it had sure. to have tons of sugar because it actually yeah. tasted good. All right, uh, Chris also. So you can find us ingredients to life cereal. I don't know if that, oh, it's got to be they horrible. Maltodextrin. Oh yes, they do. It, There's some cinnamon life in our house because my husband loves it cinnamon taste- life. Good, it <laughs> but it's wow. so sad that the commercials for cereal were basically broken up into three categories. There was cereal that we all knew was bad. You know, mm. you count Chocula and Captain sugar Crunch. Snacks. Like, we get it. Yeah. It's all just carbs and sugar. Then there was the stuff that was pitched as a healthy alternative to the bad stuff, which is all carbs mm. And a little less sugar. Yeah. Yeah. Kicks. Was Frosted mini wheat. A little mm. less red dye number 17. But yeah. it, to your liver and to your waistline, equally as yeah. harmful. Have the fruity pebbles. And then we would eat nine bowls of that because like, well, we're not eating Count Chocula. Well, remember the big, there must have been a little dip in the grape nuts market because that's when they came out with, aha, microwave it. Well, this <laughs> is the third strata, which is then there's the full-blown commitment to your grape nuts, which does taste like shit, but not once we put a brick of brown sugar, yeah, sugar on top of it. Yeah. Then it will spring back to life. All right. Should we get into this? Yeah, go ahead. Life cereal ingredients. Whole grain oat flour, sugar, corn flour, whole wheat flour, rice flour, salt, calcium carbonate, disodium now we're phosphate. Down to the, now we're down to like the trace yep, ingredients. Reduced Iron niacinamide, which sounds dangerous. That'll um, kill you. Yeah. All right, uh, so yellow five, yellow six, blah, blah, blah. There's nothing good about this cereal from a health perspective well, the first whatsoever. Eight things are wheat and sugar. Yeah. And if you look at Captain Crunch, it's probably just about the same, about the same it's just shit. Puffed in a different shape. It was it was it was diabolical. It's like the same company would come out with this cereal. It was like, oh, okay, you can't eat that, and then they'd go, oh, we got an alternative to the thing we invented that you can't eat, which is basically the same thing because we put a bunch of sugar and starch in it, and you'll oh. go, oh, not too bad. Mikey you, likes. You're it. much younger than me, so I don't Thank know if it was still a thing by your by your uh, young age, but. Kicks cereal. Oh K-I-X. my god! That was like the mom. What was yep. it called? Mom, mom, kid tested. Mother, mother approved, approved because right. it that was, was the not option. sweet. And you, there's a fourth stage now. I don't know if you're aware of this. Mm. You walk down any cereal aisle, and they because it's all corn, 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 corn. They proudly exclaim gluten free. Right. Oh, because of corn. Yep, yeah, because there's no gluten in it. All right. Uh, there was a competition that Chris found out about, which is um, Arizona and the freeway signs. Um, I sometimes these things make me feel good that other states are as dumb as we are. Huh. That they're trying to pick out <laughs> stuff to put on their freeway sign. It's a race to the bottom. Mm-hmm. I literally, yeah. the right on the red, if we could just get that, if we could just mm-hmm. push the right on the red, if we could just yeah. push, you can turn right on a red. I, My work would be done in this city, but... Everything has to do with slow down or cone zones or you you give us what they do. What was the story, Dawson? <clears throat> More than 3,100 entries in Arizona Department of Transportation's annual safety message contest have been narrowed down to 12. <laughs> and the public has their chance to vote for the winner. I remind you, this is not parody. People can vote for their favorite creative safety message online through Monday. And this will go up on the freeway signs. Yeah, the two winners 
being displayed on signs nationwide or statewide, sorry. Oh, boy. So here are the finalists. Use your vision. Avoid a collision. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, I, you, so look is the yeah. message. This is to keep people from dying, and we're going with puns and I, rhymes. I, again, I, <laughs> the kind of I, the general vibe of like, hey, man, you know, be alert. Like, we need people not to get out of their car in the third lane when they've had a, a small bumper bender. <gasps> That's that's what we need people yeah. to do. The just sort of general like, hey man, Don't be a good drive. whatever. It's so weird. What are they hoping to accomplish with use your vision? <laughs> like open your eyes. I'm willing to bet that 100 percent of people on the Arizona <laughs> roads have their eyes open. Or <laughs> for the less than 25 percent who don't, they can't see the sign. Right. Well, but so yeah. who's, who's it for? That's right. Next up. You won't make it if you fake it. Buckle up, AZ. These people are functional idiots. What does being fake it mean as it pertains to buckling like up? You're fa- you're don't, don't fake putting your seatbelt yeah. on. Yeah. But fake putting it on or yeah, fake yeah, having I it, I don't know. it'll retract. It means yeah. saying that. Like you so buckle th- on an empty seat and sit on top of it? What? So as to fool the cop behind you? This is the but best and the brightest fool, of Arizona? You can't fool the, yeah, you can't fool the cop if you're on it. If they pull you over, it's a game over. But they can't see. They'll see that it's not coming across your chest, I guess, if they get up next to you. To be sure. fair, all these it people stops, went to Arizona State. Yeah, it stops the beeping. <laughs> appreciate that. Which is good. I suppose the fake it part is where you pull it across and then you just stuff it into the yeah. side of the seat. Because that's a lot of yeah. I know. All right. I, so far, we're 0 for 2, right? These yes. two, like... If, look, you won't make it, it if you fake. Uh, Buckle up, AZ. Okay, look. Slow for the cone zone is insane, but at least it means there's construction yeah. coming up. Bring it down. Fine. I'll, I'll grant you that. It's worthless, but fine. These, it's specific. These first two don't mean anything. Correct. All right. Kind is cool. Drive the golden rule. What? <laughs> the fuck? This, this isn't real. <laughs> These are, are the, the are, finalists. Are we working most voted for? These are just the finalists. Okay. These no, are the 12 most voted. No particular yeah. order. All right. Hands on the wheel, not your meal. So right. far, that's, that's the best the one. That's the only one, one, one that has so a real far, specific that's the best message. One. Yeah. All right. That meant something. Don't hurry. Be happy. Oh, uh, if this was 30 you know, years ago, yeah. that'd be yeah. Bobby Bobby Ferris is going to collect yes. some royalties yeah. off of that. Yes. Belts and blinkers. Summer's hottest accessories. Now, okay, <laughs> the blinker's not really an accessory. The belt, the belt, maybe, but blinkers would be nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, at least we got the blinkers part. The belts, mm. belts. I, I had some issues with my car uh, that they had to go in and be serviced. Then there was more issues than I would ever. I climbed into a Natalia's car. What? I had to commandeer her car. Wait, what's her car? What, Mercedes? It's a, it was a Mercedes oh. non, non-convertible. Oh, you really put yeah. your foot down? Yeah, yeah, say, sure. foot down. <laughs> uh, not all my decision, but I will say this. I was glad to have an extra car flopping around yeah, the house sure. because I jumped into my car and it was dead and oh. I just jumped right out of my car and jumped into this Mercedes. I got in her car. I was, you know, heading down the drive. I, I live in a place where it's like kind of there's no traffic to be found for a uh, yeah, half a mile before you, you, you do. I got in the car. I took off. The car went into an epileptic seizure because I didn't put the belt on. Oh, it wow. was bing, 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 bing. And then it starts speeding yeah. up and the lights flashing mm-hmm. and stuff. There is distracting. D- it, it's, it's like saying. It'll get your attention. Yeah. Well, here's what I'm saying. Whatever's up on the sign is a vague suggestion <laughs> versus what is going on inside of the car. The if relentless. in fact you're not wearing your belt, right. it's like it's like saying you're in the middle of a pinball machine with the lights and the yeah. Sounds. It's like saying you know what you need to floss, and I'm going to stomp on your foot <laughs> until you do. But you know what? I'm going to send you a text yeah. once a day as well. It's like no, you had I'm me at stomping. The foot will do. We were done. It's in every car. It goes nuts. It's it's hard to concentrate with the chime going off. There's there's no reason to mix it 
into this. It's the parsley by the side of the plate and the diner. It's it's no one wants it when it's under bygone era. Yeah. Not used. It's it it's worked into everything. It's like belch, 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 belch. It's it's in every car and every dash. It's not it's no reason to waste any real estate on it whatsoever. That's a good point. However, in the ever lowering bar that is this contest, <laughs> this is like top two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this is it's got the, the blinkers place. in there. That's right. Signal to the left, signal to the right, merge real smooth. You know what? I don't mind that. Oh, is that like cha-cha, cha-cha real, real smooth? smooth. <laughs> I don't mind that. I don't mind that. Use your signal. I didn't get it. How many people don't use their blinker? You got to find that song. I don't mind that. Yeah, I didn't know the popular song. It's so. just, it's, 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 it's like you're a, been a wedding. Bar mitzvah? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wedding reception. Yeah, bar it's, it's, it's like it's like this today's uh, it's chicken dinner. Slide dance. to the it's left. Slide, slide to, to the, the right. right. Cha-cha real smooth. Yeah. Huh. It's bad. All right. Well, look, anything that has to do with signaling, I'm yeah, fine. That's our leader in the clubhouse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Disengage with road rage. Yeah. That would give me road rage. You can't. This is basically. Yeah. This is this falls under the heading of those signs that, you know, you see at the Denver airport by the baggage carousel. It's a picture of a rhinoceros missing a horn saying, I am not medicine. It's like. Okay. I never said you were. Yeah. I'm going to the P.F. Chang's outside of Golden. I I, I don't know what I'm you want me to audience. do with the, yeah. the, the rhino poaching over here. And I'm aware. Now. I don't know how many poachers you could dissuade yeah. through this. You know what I mean? In Denver. Who's it for? If you're into road rage, <laughs> That's your you're into road rage. Oh, yeah. And Brian, this might be more for you. Grammatically... Disengage with road rage almost sounds like they're suggesting using road rage, road rage. Yeah, as a way to disengage. As a way to disengage. I don't oh, like it. I like that. Yeah, you're yeah. right. Didn't think yeah. about that. Yeah. All right. All right. Got a tab? Call a cab. Oh, like a bar. Okay. That's a little A to C, but okay. All right, but, but we're already on the road. We're on the freeway. Yeah. We're <laughs> passing <laughs> under a sign. <laughs> oh, shit. I'll call him now. <laughs> <laughs> Safe driving. What a vibe. What? Mm, that's, no, a, no. that's a zero burger. That's less than, yeah, That's zero. nothing. What? Drive buzzed, get stung. Oh, oh they will be like the weaponized African ice cream. Okay. All right. And finally, exit to text it. Oh, oh. Okay, if you're going to send it to... Does anyone know about Apple CarPlay <laughs> these days? <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking crazy. All right. I want something about Red Turn. I, I ride on a red, just ride on a red. What was wrong with if it steers, it clears? I don't. I, I, the, the two biggest, the big, the number one thing on the freeway has to do with people getting into minor fender benders and getting out of their mm-hmm. car. That's, that's number one. Number two is pe- maintenance. Like people driving yeah. around with Deflate three ball tires, tires right. that are deflated and right. stuff. Like, Putting air in your tires, maintaining your car, rotating your tires. Changing your wipers. Flyper fluid, right. coolant, Wiper all this kind of stuff. Most of the shit we see on the freeway that's fucking everyone up is a small fender bender with people out of the car and or somebody who got a blowout and it stopped the car, whatever. Very dangerous as well. Or the car's overheated. It's Arizona. Right, right. For Christ's sake. Point. Put something about fucking maintenance yeah. and or red turns. Uh, at the red light. It's a, it's insane. I, I drive around. If you got to drive down to PCH, you'll just see lines just stacking up. And it's like people just don't mm. fucking do it. I'll tell you another insidious move. Mm. And I don't know how we get this one across, but it'd be one of mine. You guys will experience it when you leave this very studio and you turn right and you're heading uh, down Flower Street. Many times. There are often times when there is a lone car in one lane, and, and that person right has lane. slid into the right yeah. lane. Oh, yeah. If you're the only car, 80, don't do that. Eighty-six percent of people want to turn right and get on one or the other freeways. Mm, and nope, you're just waiting for. Yes. Why do you need to do it on in, on in the right lane? There's no everything's open. That's a combination of a lack of courtesy and just being out of it. If you're out the only it. car, why are you there? And yes. you need some good, nice, healthy, low self-esteem because I would never do that if I was going straight because I'd be nervous that the people behind me would start honking. Yes. All right. I, I got it. These hmm. are so bad. They're so idiotic. I think I have one just as idiotic right. that would actually get your message across. It's just hmm. off the top of my head. <laughs> Fender bent off the freeway, gent. Mm. You know what? You can take yeah. that. Do you, you think only men arm? drive? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that is a winner. <laughs> that is uh, like 
look, uh, if it steers, it clears. It's yeah. pretty, pretty so straight. If you can operate that sweet. car, move it, clear it out, yep. man. All right, let me tell you about uh, Simply Safe. Today's episode is brought to you by Simply Safe Home Security. We believe that uh, home should be the safest place on earth for every family. I use it. I recommend Simply Safe. It's a great product. Peel and stick. Batteries last up to 10 years. No drilling, no pulling wires, 24 7 professional monitoring. Simply Safe's agents, dispatch police, or, f- or first responders the moment a threat is detected. Even if you're not home or can't be reached, just a buck a day, no long-term contracts. Named Best Home Security of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report. And third year in a row, by the way, so they're starting to dominate. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash Adam. Go today for a free indoor security camera, plus 20% off with interactive monitoring at simplysafe.com slash Adam. That's simplysafe.com slash Adam. Trending topics with our own Chris Max Zapata right after this. Adam Carolla's sixth book and audiobook. Everything reminds me of something. Advice, answers, but no apologies. Gender issues are starting to creep into government regulations, too. Last year, Governor Newsom, in his never-ending quest to find shit to focus on other than homelessness, traffic, wildfires, and housing prices, found time to sign into law a bill requiring stores to offer sections of gender-neutral toys. Aren't there already tons of gender-neutral toys? I'm pretty sure Monopoly doesn't give a shit if you have a dick or a pussy. The game pieces are already gender-neutral. It's a race car, a hat, and an iron. Not a vagina or testicles figurine among them. Hey, Newsome, a little less wokus and a little more focus. That's just what we need. A government bureaucrat going into businesses and making sure the toy aisles have gender neutral offerings. Though I did come up with a fantastic name for said section, the androgynous zone. Everything reminds me of something coming soon, wherever finer books are sold. Pre-order yours now at adamcarolla.com. All right, we got trending topics. Hi, everybody. All right, thank you. I gotta say, once every three years, I think, I wonder if, I wonder if Loxamana doesn't like being called Max Zapata. And then really? you go back to whatever you were doing. And then I go, oh, fuck it. It's, yeah, who cares? <laughs> it's done. It's grandfathered in. Yeah. Right. Sometimes right. I have thoughts. <laughs> every once in a while. Every once in a while, I have this like moment. Like, does he not no. like it? No. Well, go, he's right nah. here. You could ask him. Yeah. Yeah. He, tell you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. right. he loves it. Come on. <laughs> Gina, what does he think? <laughs> I don't know. Bald. Tell us. Mean. Mean. That's what I'm saying. I just, I cannot believe I'm the, uh, you had to wait to your th- 31st birthday for that to be introduced. Yeah. yeah there, every, every day I think, yeah, how did, how, I can't believe that Adam thinks that my friends haven't come up with that yet. Wow. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's well, it's, it's really a, kind of an indictment of your friends. You know what I mean? Ball. They are. Yeah, you're hanging around not. with young Kimmel. He would have come up with that shit. I know. A long they're time they're ago. really bad at coming up with extremely <laughs> obscure nicknames that have nothing to do with your actual name. That's not where they well, shine. There's, yeah. the, the point is, is there's not much you can do with Loxamana. There's not. There's plenty. There's Waxalama. Yeah, I, but there's loves his mama. Yeah, loves his mama and walks a llama. Just, <laughs> it, it doesn't cut. You know yeah. what I mean? It's not it's even that offensive. insulting. There are many noble people who walk llamas. My <laughs> grandfather was a llama walker. He was a great man. Yeah, I heard about him. And he loved his mama. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, the other ones were compliment- complimentary. That's what, well, mm. why. Don't waste your you time on a complimentary yeah. nickname. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. All right. Go ahead. I'll chastise my friends later. Mm-hmm. Uh, the name <laughs> the name Rob Zombie was trending why? this week. Is he alive? He's alive. He made a movie. He's a film, you know, filmmaker. He's made many yeah, yeah, filmmaker right. Rob Zombie. Uh, well, because he, he's remaking The Munsters. Mm-hmm. It's coming out in September. Good. And it is a prequel to the 60s sitcom. The trailer just dropped, uh, which claims it's the greatest love story ever told. But the reason that everybody's talking about it is because it's going to be rated PG instead of Are Rob's. Are you doing a family friendly yeah, Munsters? Instead of Rob's mm-hmm. usual. I don't like that. Well, hard yeah, you R. have to be, right? Mm. You're going to no. make it R Munsters? Fuck yeah. 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 
They're monsters. <laughs> I mean, it is kill people. It is a big thing to just take everything dark and yeah, and uh, yeah. But Rob, sure. Rob's like, no, this is gonna be family friendly, man. Is he kind of the ghoul version of the of John Waters? <laughs> Like, there's not a lot there, but I got a bunch of shit around me that, man, like, musically, creatively. Some of those songs were catchy. Let's ask our film expert, though. You know what? I'm thinking to myself, Giovanni is is going nuts right now, sending you a text or an email, because I have not seen a Rob Zombie film. They're not my genre, but uh, I think they're respected in the in the horror mm. world. I've seen two point or no one point one Rob Zombie movies. I've okay. seen House of a Thousand Corpses, which I hated. Okay. And then I saw The Devil's Reject, which I walked out on uh, about 20, 25 minutes wow. in. So yeah. not a fan. Not, oh, not a fan. Yeah, well, that's what? the only movie I've ever walked out on was The Devil's Rejects. If his name was Rob Nicholson and he dressed it like, might be. Like Adam Sandler. It's true. <laughs> yeah, would that we, would help. Would maybe. we care? Do I mean, look up I, the Rotten Tomato scores of his movies? Are they just trash? I, or are they, no, I think I think they're highly renowned, especially like his Halloween remakes. I, I hear people really yeah, I like those. Yeah, they were okay. But yeah. you walked, there's only one movie you walked out of. My it was own, a Rob I, the Zombie only movie. one, yeah, was The wow. Devil's Rejects. And I walked out, my friends were still in there, so I had to, I had to make do with my time. So I went and watched The Island. With, it was a Michael oh, Bay movie with Scarlett movie, yeah. Johansson, Ewan McGregor. I loved it. And By then comparison. I did. I, I was like, okay, this is a great movie. And great palate cleanser to that that horror that I was just watching in what the What was so Regents. bad about it? Uh I just it it just seemed like it was just uh like horror and and gore porn. Like they just wanted to shock you in every way possible. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I, I, I don't genre. care for that. Yeah. yeah. So I mean it's just it's a personal taste thing. I'm not saying uh, nobody go watch it. If you're into that stuff, go mm-hmm. ahead. But I watched the island. I, I actually really enjoyed the island. And then what's funny is all my friends leave the Devil's Reject. We get out around the same time. And this is when we were young and movie hopping was a thing. It's like, all right, Chris, we're all going to go watch The Island now. Yeah. So I had to watch The Island twice, oh, back to back. you liked it. I did. <laughs> now, to make your point, Adam, Rob Zombie cuts through, but does Robert Bartley Cummings? No. that's his name. It says Regal. Uh, yeah, it really does. All Rob Zombie movies are rotten, according to... Mm-hmm. Oh, we'll badge put of this honor. on the screen. Well, it's just those critics. Yeah, and and then the question horror is, is how are we with the people? That's a good point, yeah. actually, because horror is for the You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if you're a fan of horror, you're in for the genre. Right. Yeah. So they left uh, Devil's Rejects. You left the island. And then they were like, hey, Llama Walker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. guy loves his mama. Those are mama the days. Loves mama Walker, hey, hey, that guy loves his llama. Mama's a llama. Yeah. You're a llama. Bring, oh, bring me right back so to childhood. Bright. We're so smart. So yeah. Clever, man. See, that yeah. doesn't work at all. <laughs> so, so I took my llama. Uh, yeah, I walked I, I, So I, I will say this. I have a, my first reaction when someone is, has a big get up or something mm. kitschy, when you when you do something for kids, you know, you, you're a comedian or you do magic or something, you come out with your shtick and your outfit and everything. I go, all right, that, that's mm. for kids. When that's you do thing. stuff for adults and you have the whole affect mm. outfit and stuff, I go, well, what's missing in the creative department yeah. that's being overcompensated for? Yeah, so if you look at that picture that Ben, ben had up, so I don't think you're going to recognize any of – the actors and apologies if, if if you might, but like Jeff Daniel Phillips, he's one of the Geico cavemen. He's playing oh, Herman Munster. I can see the slope, yeah. And then his um, wife is. Uh... Yeah, so his wife, Mrs. Munster, is, he pulled a Melissa McCarthy and cast his significant other, mm-hmm. uh, who actually is in all of his movies pretty much. And her name is Sherry Moon Zombie. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so she, yeah, she is. Uh, she's in the movies. Well, I mean, Rob says he's been a lifelong fan. He said he said he's pursued developing this film for over twenty years. Oh no! It was and, a passion project. Yeah, and he made an exact replica of Mockingbird Lane Mansion. Is there in I, like, and they were like in Romania or the Eastern Bloc to to shoot this? I think. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, uh, yeah was, Grandpa Al was the meanest guy I've ever God, met in my I life. I, so I spent a lot of time with that guy. Getting backhanded. <laughs> he was a mean dude. He was mean to everybody. He spat tobacco on a hardwood floor. He yell at the TV set. <laughs> he smacked me in his Volvo. <laughs> He was just the most. He was back when dads could be crotchety, yeah, like hard crotchety. Mm-hmm. You know, he's also one of these guys who would watch the sporting events with the sound down because these goddamn announcers were ruining it forever. You know, like I, I don't know why, like a hard stance 
on announcers and uh, maybe even might even watch the ball game with the sound down and maybe the radio, the radio up or, or something like that. But they paint a better picture. I think I caught him in a post monsters <laughs> or monsters funk, yeah. mm. you know, and things that cooled down for him and in, in Hollywood. No more car fifty four. No more monsters. No, and we just. He just had this little shack of a house in Van Nuys, and I would just hang out there with his kids all day. But how he was they, mean. How are the kids doing these days? I don't know. He had uh, three sons. I haven't kept in touch with them. The unicycle I got, my first unicycle, was the oldest brother's right. unicycle that I had a memory that, oh, I know someone, when I got onto the unicycle and became like literally ad- addicted through trying my dad's girlfriend's son's unicycle out when I was like 10. I was like, oh, I must have a unicycle. And uh, obviously going down to the Schwinn shop and buying a unicycle oh. was not even a discussion Non-starter. to have. But Dave had one. And I remember like, you want to talk about, you know about shit they'd never let you do? Dave was this pretty stout guy, <laughs> like the older brothers, you know, fit and strong and good shape. He could ride a unicycle. <laughs> he would put the youngest brother on his shoulders and mount up. Barnum and Bailey. That, you know, not a helmet to be found. Awesome. Could you imagine anyone today like <laughs> looking out their front window <laughs> with the one son's on the unicycle and the smallest one's on the shoulders and nope. they're paddling around? That video would go viral. Oh, my God. The, you, the kids would be taken away by Child <laughs> yeah. Protective Services, right? Yeah, yeah that's like Ringling Brothers. Is Dave, Ted, and Paul. Yes, those are, those are the brothers, and you'll probably see Ted is my my age, or should be, because that that was my friend, and yeah, I, was, I remember right where I was when uh, Al belted me <laughs> in the back of the car. I do not remember what I said that warranted the you know, beat down in the back of the Volvo, but uh, definitely laid hands on me. Yeah, you probably you know, deserved it. I'm sure yeah. I said something. Yeah, popped up. <laughs> Whatever. And he was Just in a bad profile. place too. He was yeah. not in a good. It was not a good time for him. He had a. He had, he had his salad days with Car 54, 54 where, where are, are you? you? And he did a lot of bit rolls and stuff. And then the Munsters came along, and that was good. And then things flattened out. And then later on, he like moved to New York and got on Howard Stern, right. like opened a restaurant, and had a kind of resurgence, right. like Renaissance. a kind of right. Grandpa Al thing. Were you? An, I, I've probably seen almost every Car 54 episode. Do you even know the theme song? It's great. Mm. There's a hold up in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken oh, yeah. out of fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short of child, Chris Jeff Stewart, Idle Wild, Car 54, where are you? Dad, big fan of old sitcoms, watched them all. Rob Zombie covered that. <laughs> that would be fucking <laughs> awesome, by the way. <laughs> I did have a, I had a, I had a, I had a couple flash moments, which is, I wonder if he's Jewish. I he think must so. be. Al Lewis, I think so. Yeah. You ever have those things? You ever have those weird, in the annals of things adults assume. adults would never do anymore or whatever? Like, I don't, I don't take my kids' friends and, like, dress them down, you know? Like, excuse mm. me, excuse you. Young man. Young man, you mm. march yourself back into that. You know, it's a lot of, like, stupid what? moms and march yourself mm-hmm. and you don't. You can't and do that of, anymore. Weird stuff. I, again, God forbid they walked into the kitchen and you had your head in the pantry oh, or something. I was oh like, no. oh my God. I remember my friend Chris, her mom was Barbara. Her friend was Joyce. Joyce lived in a piece of shit apartment in North Hollywood with her, you know, single mom and her one stupid son. She would come over and she would enforce around Chris's mom's house. You know what I mean? Like I would be in the yeah, kitchen yeah. going, "Oh, baloney!" And she'd Joyce would come around the house. fucking corner. Excuse me, do you live here? Like, Excuse you. Is that your refrigerator? Yeah, you march yourself, young man. I'm like what? I'm fucking eleven. Who cares? Like. Could you imagine no. going over to a friend's house and then being the enforcer no. for their son's friend? No. And that's all it was. And I remember one time, I've never told this story before, but uh, Al was like, he likes sports a lot. And he and he did like football and like high Dodgers. school football and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And, and he did... Would Once in a while, we go to Van Nuys Park and we get a few people together and Al would beat everyone up in the station wagon and then we'd get there and we'd recover and then he'd hit us some fly balls and stuff. I didn't ha- I was left-handed. So I didn't have a you can't uh, trade you gloves. Admit, yeah. Yeah. I can't trade gloves, but yeah. of course my family wouldn't spring for a glove, so I would use 
the righties glove. And I, I do a, is it Jim Abbott um, type move? Jim like I, I, I could catch it out in the outfield, sort of drop the glove and throw mm-hmm. it, lose two tenths of a second. Maybe I was good with it. But at some point I called one of the kids a schmuck. Oh boy. And Al heard it and went weird. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. Like when uh, you could yeah. get weird, like you never say yeah. that word. You don't know what that word means. Now I'm Not thinking about it. Probably was Jewish he, or something. Is, yeah. Uh, to me, it was just something I heard. You know, like mm. hey, you schmuck. And and by the way, I wasn't gonna call you a dickwad or fuckface. <laughs> yeah, why do you react to that? I, yeah. There's a fairly certain, innocuous. There's word. also certain people have certain things with certain words. That's a bygone era thing with the parent. Like you do not use. You don't know what that word means or whatever it is. Yeah, it's really sensitive to certain. I said schmuck in front of him, and he mm-hmm. did, he gave me a real like. I remember going like, I'm sorry, I didn't know what what, what I said. <laughs> well, I had a teacher. I think it was. I think it was six. No, so whatever it was, we were naming. Uh, it was in class, and like they broke us up into groups of six for some sort of competition, trivia, or spelling. I don't know. And they not his name our team. And we're like, yeah, bloody lightning. That's our name. And she's like, no, in England, bloody is a bad word. Mm. Like, Where the fuck are yeah. we? <laughs> <laughs> I still remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I used the word schmuck. Yeah. He did not it, like it. It's it's fairly innocuous, but maybe because he, he does come from uh, shtetl people, that that was the big one. You know, the, you call someone a schmuck, it's like calling him an asshole. But Dave... Had that unicycle rusting in the back, and a couple of years later, I got hold of it. Calling your name. Took it home, and like ooh, like out of a montage, like oiled <laughs> it, and took steel wool to yeah. it, got all the rust off it, and changed the inner tube on the tire, wow. made a made a jean yeah. out of cutoffs, made a jean seat cover, because the seat was all busted up, and like sewed it, sewed it by hand, it was off, off and going. That's my impressive. Mom made me give it away to my stupid neighbor. Lame. I hate st- that. And stole I, it. And I hate that he stole it. And I hate that didn't you have to pay for this rusted out piece of shit that he wasn't even using? No. What I what I said is I, I gave a comp I, I gave a hypothetical competition in the worst mom's department, which is I rode this unicycle. I, I I clung on to it with both hands, like 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 an inmate would do with a bird. You oh, yeah. know what I mean? Like that's yeah. all I had. Yeah. Is all I had was this unicycle, and I was good. I could ride it off of loading docks <laughs> right. and park tables and everything. I could do three sixties. Like I was, it was all I had. And when I broke my my arm, my shoulder playing football, I had a big cast on. But still, the unicycle was all I had, so mm-hmm. I was imme- waiting for you. immediately back on that no. unicycle, pedaling around with the cast. And uh, I think my mom and maybe others in the neighborhood they didn't like the optics of the guy with mm-hmm. the big cast zipping around on the unicycle. She didn't could- care per se, just that you were a perceived. Perceived, a bad look. Yeah. So uh, she said, uh, you're off the unicycle until the cast comes off. And then uh, a guy named Chris, who was up the street, not my old friend Chris, but another friend uh, slid in and said, hey, if you're off the unicycle for two months, maybe I'll ha- maybe I can hop on it for no. two months. And I, could, I was like, yeah, I, it's the only thing I got, but okay. I couldn't say no. Very low self-esteem. So <laughs> he took it, and he rode around for two months. Then the cast came off. Then I said... I'm now going to be reunited with my unicycle. And so I said, where's my, I need my unicycle back. And he said, I put it in your backyard. And I, I like said, that. when was that? And he says, a couple of days back, I returned it. Yeah. Oh. And I was like, you knew, the, you knew the cast was coming <laughs> off. I, I said, all right, let me go look in the backyard. And I looked and there's nothing in that backyard. And I said, uh, it's gone. And he said, well, someone must have stolen it. Yeah. Like, well, what are you going to do? But I, I returned it. Oh, his conscience is clear. And I said uh, to my mom, do you think you could talk to Chris's mom and try to figure this one out? Because he's kind of standing by his story. She doesn't seem to be getting involved. <laughs> like between the two of you, surely we could cobble together another unicycle, Master right? negotiator, Chris Carolla. <laughs> so she... Uh, Haggler. <laughs> I talked to her a day later and I said, uh, did you figure anything out? And she said, hey, said he put it in the yard, he put it in the yard. Oh, my God. And that was the last unicycle I ever had until oh. I was like 30. Oh. <laughs> so, but whose mom's worse? It's your rosebud. It's pretty bad. Chris, Chris's mom or my mom? No, yours. No offense. But, you know, you can't, you, you can't uh, 
put any weight on what the other mom's going to do. You don't know her. Your mom is supposed to go over there and kick some ass. Yeah. To be fair, Take to, up her to, to be yeah. fair to my mom, she probably never talked to Chris's no, mom. Of course she, she didn't probably talk just to her. That's blew some point. spleef and went back in the room yeah. and, and like consulted the bio rhythm wheel, and then just went. Yeah, I talked to her. She <laughs> says it's a no go. Yeah, I think it's from what I understand. Your mom was. Can we say antisocial? This mm. would not have been. She wouldn't have come over to uh, say, "Oh, lovely day." Uh, she she certainly wasn't going to get in someone's grill. I baked the casserole. Can we talk about unicycles? Yeah, exactly. Kick no. some dirt on her shoes. No. Yeah, no, no. this is why I didn't that let anybody it. walk my llama. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, unfortunately, after all this, Joel McHale, I'm I'm, I'm told is here. Yeah, he's here. So, so uh, we got to bring this home. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Check out the water cooler, everybody. That's <laughs> The only good part about that whole incident with the unicycle is I've received between eight and ten free unicycles through telling that horrible oh, wow. sob story to adults who are gainfully employed. Yeah. I'd tell it at the man show. I'd go into like our producer's <laughs> office. I go, I used to have a unicycle. Then the next day I'd show up, there'd be a unicycle yeah. there with a ribbon with on bow, it. Where yeah. were you? Yeah. I should modify that. Like, I used to have this Lamborghini Diablo. Yeah. <laughs> Bar of gold. <laughs> and I broke my right foot, yeah. so my buddy Chris borrowed it. My Boy. little pet cougar in the That's backyard. Right. <laughs> he told me. That's right. Oh, by uh, the way, Devil's Rejects, you, you know, it was rotten. By the way, not that rotten, 55, with the people 78. So we we're mm. right. It's not for the critics. Yeah, I always had the feeling this stuff was like kind of fair to middling. Yeah. But um, all right, let me tell you about concrete. Your body makes half the creatine it needs. The other half comes from your diet. But uh, most American diets are low in creatine rich foods. Concrete patented creatine HCL is a favorite creatine of elite well-informed athletes, the number one bioavailable creatine and the only microdose in creatine, just one small scoop per hundred pounds. So um, it's, a, it's a little scoop. This stuff tastes good. Put it in the water bottle, shake it up. It lasts quite a long time, one container. And uh, creatine is required for functional energy in every cell. Your brain uses about 20% of the creatine in your body and your immune cells need it to protect you. So take care of yourself. With Concrete, right, Dawson? Take control of your health, both body and mind. Build a better you with Concrete. Register now at Concrete.com slash podcast. That's C-O-N dash C-R-E-T dot com slash podcast for a chance to win a $500 Walmart Visa gift card. Available now online and in-store at Walmart. Concrete is truly life-changing and performance-enhancing. Joel McHale, our good friend Joel McHale, is going to be in the studio, and we'll talk to him right after this. Adam Carolla Show presents Joel McHale's birthday cocktail party for November 20th. Let's see who's here. Let's welcome American astronomer and the namesake for the Hubble telescope, Edwin Hubble. Former United States Attorney General Robert F. Kennedy. Hey, it's game show host Richard Dawson. Dick Smothers is here. Right place, wrong time. Let's welcome Dr. John. Allman Brothers guitarist, Dwayne Allman. Eagles guitarist, Joe Walsh. Chicago's anti-disco radio jock, Steve Dahl. From the Beastie Boys, Mike D is here. And the 46th president of these United States. Repeat the line, Joe Biden. Joel McHale is on the Adam Carolla Show. Joel is always welcome in studio because he's such a breath of fresh air. God bless you. He's got a new show. It is uh, Celebrity Beef. It premieres on uh, August 2nd on E! I have seen more pronouncements, announcements, advertisements, more. I mean, maybe I'm watching too much E! But <laughs> yeah, what's I going on? Seeing, I've been you watch- love Sex and the City reruns? Yes, I do. I absolutely do. Okay. I absolutely do. I think uh, they're also showing a lot of Modern Family oh, on there that. as yeah. well, but they are running the shit out of this. So they're into it and they're behind it, and that's good. Yeah, that this won't end badly. Well, the last time I was on a show that promoted well was on CBS, and that made but, it one season. But I'm looking down at Community for six seasons. Yes, that never was promoted, though. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I have the, uh, you know, like uh, alcoholic uncle syndrome or nephew 
or like a wounded dog where I'm like, everything bad's going to happen if it goes well. Mm. Oh, if they get behind mm. it. Yeah, I'm like, uh-oh. It's kiss of death. You don't well, want Community them. was real word of mouth. It I mean, it was truly, a really yes. good The show. president of NBC did not like it. <laughs> we knew that because he said it. <laughs> <laughs> and then one time we didn't have an air date. And during the upfront, like he was like, and thanks very much. And then all these reporters like, hey, what, what are you, what's happening to the community? He just goes, depends on what fails. Oh, wow. wow. Then Dan wrote a, uh, he wrote a promo. If you go on YouTube right now, it's called FUNBC, which aired on <laughs> after our show because they didn't even check it. It was a fake promo lineup for shows. And then it just said, coming this fall or winter. It depends on what fails. That was the <laughs> promo. I mean, and God bless NBC. I love them. But uh, but that would mean they kept us on. But that really was a thing that happened. Oh, we, we have it. We have it. It was such a funny show and such a good show. But I, I agree, kind of so nuanced, it'd really be hard to describe mm. to right, somebody. Right, but I was like, it's if it's getting ratings, who cares? Mm-hmm. So uh, I was, before we, so whenever, whenever we get into these interviews, they'd be like, so your ratings, and I, and we always like I, we, I was I was always like we do better than Parks and Rec, and we're their leading, and they would and I, and I love Parks and Rec, but I was like don't what if you're talking about us, why don't you bring that up too? But they never would because it was this narrative, and so I was like so you're lazy at reporting because you're not actually looking at the numbers, and we're up against Big Bang Theory. But other than that. It's everything. I, why am I so angry about this? Dude? I, I don't know. He had a six-year run, six-season yeah. six run. Six seasons in a movie. But there and was, at the end of seasons, like, the, we'd get these notes going, hey, can this last episode be the season and series finale? Which is a great way to go out on your season three. Uh, and, of course, the soup for 11 seasons yeah. as well. So I was are... with you. We had lunch the day it was canceled. And... Uh, I did. I remember taking. We would. I. I was like. I. I don't know if you remember. It was on Ventura. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget it because I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, I guess it's all over. <laughs> and, and you were like, listen, Joel, it's gonna be fine. Don't worry. You're gonna. You're gonna move on to something great. I'm like, maybe. <laughs> And wasn't there a time where you were expecting Adam, like, live on the air, but the guy at the door wouldn't let him in at the soup? Yeah. Yeah. That's, you thought yeah. he high-handed you. God damn. No, I, I, yeah, I was supposed to be a guest on the soup. I went down to the building in Mid-Wilshire. Mm-hmm. No, Culver. No, no. No. I mean, I mean uh, it wasn't Culver City? No, it was no. Mid-Wilshire. Oh, okay. They, um... It was right, right where Kalis X used to be. Eric and you Cross had history. already been on the show a couple of times. And it was also, I think, was the Family Guy in that building, or is yep, the Family Guy yep, in that building? Yep, so yep. I was kind of used to it. Anyway, I just went down to the security guard at the front by the elevators, and I said, "I'm supposed to be a guest on uh, the soup." And uh, and the guy just kind of looked at the list and he went, "Nope, <laughs> don't see it." <laughs> and I said. Uh, all right, well, can you call up? And then he's like, nope. <laughs> it's like, well, they're expecting me. And he's like, well, we'll see. And I just said, well, I'm going to go sit over here, and then maybe like someone will come down to get me or something. And I, I sat for a while, and I asked him again, and he was like, no can do. And I remember going, why don't you just call him? And then and he was like, nah, I can't do Not that. And then I was like, all right. And then I left. <laughs> and then yeah. And then I went through the roof. And then Joel went Because there was no reason for him not to call. I mean, it wasn't. Why, that would have been very easy for him. I would argue it's part of the job. I would argue it's part of the job as well. <laughs> Literally. Did I, And I know I had one of my epic meltdowns about your swimming pool in your backyard. But oh, that was did good. it ever... I know you're not living in the same house, but did you ever make an attempt at digging a pool in your backyard? No, and the people who bought the house from us have never attempted it. Why? Because yeah, it, why bother? Well, because the city of Los Angeles is can be slightly difficult. What? And yeah. it was the greatest thing. It was so great. I wish every building inspector could hear it. Oh, It's where rant. you start screaming about your house when he was like, my house? Was built in 1915. There was no nail schedules. No. And then he's like, when an earthquake happens, it doesn't sprout legs and run to Montana. Uh, well, maybe we'll relive it. We'll see if we find we it. We should. But, but the, can... but the, you know, you know, I'll tell you the show I could host because I feel like you should host almost every show. But the show I could uh-huh. host would be called uh, Celebrity Building Woes, mm. and. 
we get a catchier name for it than that. But basically, I would s- sit down with Carson Daly, and he would explain to me the time he tried to build a pool <laughs> mm. in his Palisades home, and they made it double hulled. Like an oil tanker. Like they said, you must build two pools. One outer shell pool, one right. inner core pool. His pool cost him $700,000. And and everyone will just tell you a crazy story about and then you living could, in Los because Angeles. Because all the, all, the re- all the shows with remodels and all that crap is like, well, it's a pile of crap. And then somehow, now it's a miracle. And we did it in half an hour. No, no one ever talks about the city Saying, yeah, sorry, that railing, because you put it there, the whole thing stops for six months. It's insane. Well, do we have the, should we play the clip that we were the F-U-N-B-C? discussing? The F-U-N-B-C? Oh, yeah. This was, so this was the fake lineup. This was, this was what they well, Where was this aired or where did it? On NBC at about 829, right before <laughs> Parks and Rec started. <laughs> wow. Oh, you got it. Am I thinking what you're well, thinking? I started at the beginning. Sorry. Am I thinking what you're thinking? There's Ken. <laughs> All made up. All made up. Bro. Intensive Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Egypt. <laughs> Celebrity beat off. <laughs> that should be a show. Captain Cook. <laughs> Depends Depends on what fails. Fails. <laughs> that's God, that's so amazing. funny. And then they called being pissed. They were like, how could you do that? They were like, we sent it to you. It was sent to you. You've had you've had a while. <laughs> that is so goddamn funny. Did you ever see the X Files episode called Home? About it's a very disturbing Have you guys know what I'm talking about? Possibly. I saw a lot of X Files. So Basically, it's one. these freaks who uh were all inbred. And were the carnival freaks? No, they were. Their mom was underneath their bed, and the mom had given was. It was all very oh, incestuous, no. and it was very dark. And then Fox came out with this thing, going, "We'll never air this again." And they had not looked at it before it aired, and people called in, going like this, because the mom had no arms or no legs and uh, was being slid out from underneath this I bed. I this. mean, it is a crazy episode of television that aired in the '90s, and it's great. So thank you. Sorry. Uh, you should host that show, or we could do a show called Dyslexics Unite, where we just read things out loud <laughs> yeah. and see and whoever fucks up first. Well, loses. that was. Uh, Prompter Wars. That, when I hosted The Soup, maybe it was Talk Soup. Probably was ta- just Talk, talk soup, soup back then. I, I hosted, I had one of my miniature meltdowns <laughs> because I kept telling them, I think me and Drew hosted. I think so. Yeah. And uh, I kept telling them, you cannot load up that prompt. Prompter and scroll it. I cannot read. It's not going to work. You you have your clips. Just give the beats. Give the time. Yeah. I'll throw it to the thing. I'll work some beats. I'll comment. I'll do it off the cuff. It's it's not going to work. I I'll, I won't be able to pull it off. And I told him like eighteen times. And when I showed up, it was just <laughs> loaded piles oh, no. and piles. I called your bluff. Of info. <laughs> yeah. And I I I had a meltdown. You sh- as you should have. Yes. When you tell, when you're like, i allergic to nuts. So whatever you do, make That's sure right. that this dessert has no nuts in it. And then out comes a peanut butter parfait. Yes. For your birthday and that I've, you've arranged. And, and like, while oh. I love alliteration, I hate nuts. <laughs> and so even if it's going to be peanut butter yeah. parfait, I have to take a stand. It used to take me four hours to get through 22 minutes of jokes on the soup. And like people quit. Not, I mean, like, like guys on, you know, in the studio quit. I was like, I can't do this is ridiculous because I was so bad at reading. Well, let's, uh, okay, let's take a, a deep dive in, into this uh, because I'm the same way. I was the same way. And I did not know or anticipate this part of show business. So I was, you know, bad student, blue collar construction, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, when I got out of high school, I'm like, feh with reading. I'm not reading yeah. anything. I mean, if 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 there was a, an instructions on how to cook mac and cheese on the back, I'd be like, too much. I'll get a headache. <laughs> I'll wing it. I'll figure this out. I know. I Stop know. Stop signs. No way. No way. <laughs> forget right. it. It's, it's just traffic T- lights. <laughs> But forget any sky riding. <laughs> Ed loves Shelley. No, nope. nope, not looking up. Like subtitles. everything was too much. Oh, something I couldn't even yeah, I keep even up. Not, not even close. So I was like, 
I am now done with the phase of life where I'm humiliated. It gives me a headache. I drag my finger. I cannot do it. I'm left-handed. I'd have to write on the chalkboard. I would smear Smear. everything I wrote. I'm the guy who was told in the sixth grade to write the PE schedule. Boys and girls, I spent... I spelt girls with a U, and the entire <laughs> class started laughing at me, calling me a dope, you know? And by the sixth grade, you should know how to spell girls. By the first grade. But, uh, so, what do you think? He started with a U. So, when you listen to. What is, so, when the song Girls, 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 oh, you thought. Please. You, you, PTSD. you. It's all about you. So. And I made it. I, 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 I crafted a career on a construction site, and I never yeah. had to read or write anything for 12 years. And then all of a sudden, I, I got into show business. And they'd be like, at the very beginning, they'd be like, hey, they want to do a local Union 76 thing, and they want you to cut a radio spot, like a one-minute spot, and we're going to have you. And they'd have the people be like in the booth, and they'd go, here's the copy. <laughs> and I'd, I'd be like, use 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 and i part of it was psychological part of it was i couldn't read but the other part was i i'm so freaked out and then they go well you should play captain nebula and that star Mm -hmm. commander or whatever and they'd give me the script and they'd all be sitting there and be like i cannot yeah do it did you have Uh, when i would go to commercial yeah when i go to commercial auditions which because i couldn't get an agent uh to put me in for tv shows or movies this very nice agency called AKA took me under their wing and I would get to the audition like an hour or two before, look for the script, steal the script, or I'd get it the night before somehow and memorize it. So I'd go work just very, very slowly memorize. And so then I'd go in there and be like, you know this so well. And I would be found out like in the movie Gattaca <laughs> if they were like, it's all changed. Deep I'm like, pull. fuck. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. that's, no. And then when I heard you were dyslexic, before I really knew you, I was like, all right, so somebody made it. Somebody's famous and made it. I, or, somebody, or somebody's dyslexic. I just couldn't even it. read. I wasn't even dyslexic. But I that's literally never learned to read. couldn't read. Yeah, but you're, it wasn't because you didn't want to learn. It didn't come I learned. I, 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 I taught, well, then we got to talk about pro- progression because, and, and then you can tell me if you remember this either. And, and some of it is, you know, you being a nice looking college educated white guy, they don't think you fall in between the cracks. Right. You know what I mean? Like and you white have a guy neck tattoo yet. Yeah. When the white guy can't read, it's like dyslexia. Black guy's like, he fell between the cracks. <laughs> the society, system failed him. Society let him down. It's like, why can't he be dyslexic? <laughs> no, he fell between the cracks. Like, but they assume and so you'd get into these situations where I was supposed to be the news desk early in my career, like the news desk of the extraordinary on ordinary extraordinary the the pilot we're going to shoot for ABC with John Ritter and me and Leanza Cornett Miss uh, Miss USA or something and, wow. and I we'd be going to Florida and like the I'd go like I don't have the script and they go it's all in the prompter don't worry about it but the prompters could be all loaded up we'll have the live audience in there oh and we just fire up the fire up the prompter and it's right there you don't have to memorize anything I'm like. I got, if I wouldn't tell him, you know, I'd go, I wouldn't right, go, you don't get it. I can't. I would just go, I know it's all in the prompt. Well, I'll tell you what, just give me the script the night before. I'll bring it to the whole time. Maybe I'll punch it up a little bit. I would sit there and just read it over and over. Yep. So I so I wasn't found out at the prompter. Like, I, I didn't want to be. And I can remember, like, the first time or two, like, they, the producers, like, came by and went, like, what's up? Right. Come on, it's in the prompter. Let's, like, let's get rid of it. Right. It's funny right. that it wasn't that long ago, but it's such a different world, because today, if that was you or you or anybody, and you went to the producer, like, oh, I have a learning disability. I'm diagnosed. Well, yeah. They'd bend over backwards. To, 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 to they give you an took. in-ear. Yeah. 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 I was told, literally, in second grade, because my parents had me tested because they're like he seems bright <laughs> then he gets to school and it's like he takes heroin and uh they literally called me a slow starter which was the like a scientific term of some sort they made up and when my when my oldest son was di- uh, diagnosed with dyslexia uh you should see when we read or watch oh <laughs> subtitled movies oh my God. he's like what does it say and i'll pause it and I'll be like Okay, in this scene, he is he's just ordering some coffee. Uh, but uh, they so when they diagnosed my son, I was like, "Oh, those are all my uh, symptoms." She's like, "Oh yeah, it's it." I was wondering which one it was, and it's you. 
And I was like, you're welcome, son. And uh, But she was like, and then I said, yeah, they called me a slow starter. And I, it psychologically, for I always slow thought starter. everything, so everything I do, I'll not be great at it, but then I'll figure it out. It, so if I, if I may, back in the day, they had those like euphemistic terms, slow starter. I thankfully didn't have a problem with the, uh, dyslexia, but I was ADHD. They called me hyper, yeah. <laughs> hyper, you know, and the hyper kid. Yeah. You know, I got a problem. I also have that. So. I will. I, I will tell you, you know, the only thing that makes this secret shame worse. And I was, I was like, I was like, I don't know how to read, and I'm with all these smart people, and they know how to read, and I can't spell or do anything, and I was always humiliated. I was like, I was like, yeah. and and so I would start. You would start cheating. First off, you learn sort of sort of tricks like you know, the the black janitor never learned to read. And he goes, I don't have my glasses with me, mm-hmm, but he can't mm-hmm. read. Like you learn how to get around it, but like. Eh, it's been said many times, but not being able to read in the 90s was like being gay in the 50s. You know, I'm a pro- Secret shame. Perpetual, I'm a perpetual bachelor. bachelor yeah, yeah, I'm confirmed, you yeah. know. But like you, you had to kind of navigate mm-hmm. a little bit. Yeah. And, and they do stuff like, and then they'd have you do like the Teen Choice Awards and stuff like that. And you'd go, what are we doing? It's all in the prompter. It's all in the prompter. It's like, there's 2,000 people in this yeah. place, and you want me to read in front of 2,000 yeah, people? And the prompter's behind 1,000 of right, them. Right, way out in the distance. Right. I was always a nightmare, but I will tell you the only thing that makes it worse, or the only way it can be worse. My two partners <laughs> were Dr. Drew and Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. Those motherfuckers can read their asses off. Yeah. And I will tell dead. you. Reverence for the written word. How much. But that's why you never learn to read. Because it, 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 when I watch them, I'm like, fucking A, they're amazing. Because it just comes so naturally. Well, it, the, let me tell you how good a reader for both. A, you know, that's all Drew did was read all day. Like, just throw it in. I'll read it. You know, whatever. But Jimmy couldn't read cold, you know, Better than than anyone, and the story I'll always remember. So we used to, we do the man show. We had cue cards, and we had blue ink and black ink. And I think I had the black ink, and he had the blue ink. And so that's we knew not to read each other's cue cards. And we do an opening monologue. Could you imagine like, like I'm colorblind, <laughs> <laughs> dyslexic oh, and colorblind? We use a different font. We no, do like eight blind. minutes at the top. It's like a lot of dialogue. And I always felt self conscious because Jimmy was such a good reader, and I was felt like I don't want to flub it up and hold him back and fuck it up. I don't want to have to stop because I can't deliver whatever. So I would sit in my dressing room and just read my part yep. of the monologue over and over and over again. And when we started the show, we would sit, we'd stand behind the door and they'd announce it and blah, blah, blah. And the door would open and we'd walk through and everyone would cheer and we'd sit down or stand up and we'd do the monologue. And we were starting like season three. And I, of course, I needed two hours in my dressing room to keep reading over and over my my dialogue. And we're standing behind the door, and the theme song was playing, and the, the crowd was fired up. and was about to walk out on stage, and Jimmy goes, "What color are my cue cards again? Are you black and I'm blue?" And I'm like, "Oh, he doesn't. He didn't even. Oh, he's screwed. He's such a fucking yeah. good reader." That all I had to do was tell him the color of his eighteen cards, and yeah. he'd just mow yeah. right through it without a hiccup. <laughs> Or a stumble. That is impressive. Yeah. It's the only thing that makes your non reading worse is partnered up yeah. with world like class readers. Did yes. it ever occur to you, because you're so good aud- audibly, auditor, I don't know what the word is, to have someone read it to you or record it or whatever? Yeah, I would do I would do a little of that. And it, it would always work better. And that's why I close my eyes mm-hmm. all the time. And mm-hmm. people would talk I would and say I would it out close loud. my eyes I, yeah, and I would say it out say loud it and make recordings and stuff. But it was a really weird secret shame, right? Well, oh. and it, it's funny, too, because yeah. now they have gadgets. Have you seen the commercial for these? It's, it looks like a little tiny remote control. And you just point it at the piece of paper and, and it reads, reads it to you. you. Oh. But this shit is, what, 25 years too late? So for old I mean, people yeah. in menus? Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, my son now, I mean, you can get him now. It yeah. will read the book out loud yes. and go through it, and it's a miracle. Mm-hmm. As but, you're, but I, and so I just cheated. I just cheated through school. That's all I did. And and I was like, I figured out the system. <laughs> I got great grades by the end of my senior year in high school. So I'm like, everyone was paid. I had the right <laughs> spot. I got it all. Got, and, and I realized now that, yeah, it, I well, didn't we, learn anything. But. So here's the, then the question, which is, you were dyslexic. But I never learned to read. So I then learned to read. Like I can read much. I'm yeah. a much better reader 
now. At 50 than I was at 30. Mm-hmm. Right. I couldn't read at all when I was 30. Me too. But you, that's how it works. Because you, right. your brain finds workarounds as the more you work at it, and you have way less anxiety about it. Right. Mine was that same anxiety where I'm like, I don't, I don't know if this is going to work. And so when that when that drops away and you're like, oh, I'm this. It's okay. You, I'm just going to – and when I kind of admitted to myself, I was like, you're going to fuck it up no matter what. So just let it go. Mm-hmm. And that really, you do learn to read. You never, will never learn to read as well as Drew or Jimmy, <laughs> no, ever. I mean, no. it's ironic that you're sitting here with your fucking book, right? Yeah. <laughs> words, just like, fuck you, language and fuck words. You. He wasn't toiling at the typewriter. He said it. Fuck you, vowels and the other <laughs> thing. Exactly. Think about how many, like, how many old TV shows where they're like, uh, June, take a letter. Like all these right. CEOs, like they never learned how to type or anything. But it was always interesting how self-limiting one could be. Like, because people, for me, were like, well, maybe you could be a writer. And I was like, I can't spell. How can I write? I can't be. Well, you could work in a writer's room on a sitcom. You know, when I was like right. 28, I was like, I can't, I can't read. I can't write. I could not be hired as a writer. I, I, I had no idea it was about your ideas that you got paid for, not so much your punctuation and spelling yeah. and grammar and stuff like that. So I had eliminated could. half the business. But you had to sit and read a loaded prompter every day yeah. for a living. It was torture. And, <laughs> I mean, it was still being paid, and I was like, I'm never going to turn that down. But you were actually on a – we started promo- like doing the soup live. Mm-mm. And you were on one of those. Mm. And I remember I – for someone's idea, it was like, we'll just steer into the dyslexic. So I was promoting it by going, the soup's live now, and I'm dyslexic, so <laughs> right. it should go great. Right. So I fucked it up over and over. And then you realize, like, kind of Letterman, remember, like, Letterman would tell a joke that would bomb, and then he would bring it back eight times to remind right. us how the joke didn't go well. Right. And I was like, oh, right, he took that mistake or failure I was like, and made it the funniest thing. So that's I stole that from him. But yeah, who would have believed? Me? Now that I've passed it to my sons, I was like, both of them. Yeah, I was like, is it a hereditary thing? Yes, you pass it. De- if they get it, it's from one of the parents. Like my dad, to this day, still won't admit that he's dyslexic. Isn't it more common? He can't in spell males, mm. boys than girls. Uh, yes, I think yeah, it is. I've but heard that. girls definitely have it, and definitely they also have ADHD and all that. When you're reading now, do you are you basically translating it on the go like it's a, almost another language? What I, it, I, I people like all oh, the letters are rearranged. I was like it doesn't even look like anything. It just kind of like, like hieroglyphics. Yeah, so when, on the soup I would have to like certain jokes would be worded a certain way. I'm like I there's just no way I'm going to be able to say that. We have to find another way to word that joke cuz I I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm going to have to talk so, to my son and go Good news and bad news. Good news, I'm not dyslexic. Daddy just never learned to read, so well, you're well, clear. There's a, bad but the, you news, know there's a, yeah, bad news. 50-50 chance you're going to be an alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just but I, so we, we got to rely on jokes yes. instead of being murderers or whatever. Yeah, well, maybe the non-reading is what made you work on the improvising and yeah. being verbal and being sort of off the cuff and, and all that. Right? I, mean, I would listen to Love Line. I remember comedians <laughs> talking about you on Love Line in the 90s and they're like, have you heard this guy? He speaks in punchlines. He, they're like, guys would be like, he says things out loud that I've been working on for six months that I can't come up with something that funny. Oh, thanks. And I was like, yeah, that's why I never missed an episode. Well, and, you, well thanks. And do you think as well, like a lot of kids spent a lot of time reading and like they're, they'd read Lord of the Rings or something and right. they just they, they'd occupy themselves and so you didn't have that luxury or that and opportunity I, I think you're the same as me I don't think you have or maybe I mean I have ADHD so for me to sit <laughs> right. and read I get anxious when I sit like when I sit at the beginning of a movie I'm like <laughs> I don't know how long this is gonna last <laughs> But you probably then, uh, there's a, uh, the story, Chris, of Jim Superfoot Wallace. (laughs) Uh, Maybe it was Jim, but it's at least Superfoot Wallace. And this guy was a kickboxer. Bill. Bill Superfoot Wallace. I was way off. Very exotic name. And he, like, 
stepped on a landmine or had his foot crushed in a, a wood chipper or something like that. Like as a, he injured one foot badly, right? But he became this kickboxing champion because he overdeveloped his like front foot. And I guess other guys didn't have that ability or whatever. He, meaning he had this mm-hmm. deficit, but it pushed him in this other direction. And he became a kickboxing champion, although he had a bad wheel. Like mm-hmm. he, had a, he had a bad yeah. foot. And I think not reading for Joel McHale ended up making him focus on v- his verbal side and his improvisational side and, yep. o- and a little insecurity with a little overcompensation a yeah. side. His effortless charm. His effortless charm. What are you talking about? Oh. <laughs> well, we, I, wouldn't you say the same thing? Why you ended up going into comedy in a weird... Because, like... When, yeah. when K-Rock said somebody needs to train Kimmel, you knew you could do it and be fucking... I called Bill Superfoot Wallace as he showed up that day. And, well, there's yeah. there's all sorts of theories as to why dyslexia and exists. And they mm-hmm. think it was... Well, one of the theories is that, you know, way back when, when we were all running around in tribes and stuff, uh, dyslexic people were the ones that would be the scouts that would go off and look for other plate water and stuff because we saw the world differently. Ah. As opposed to the people that knew the system and all that. We were like, I'm not doing this. I got to do it some other way. And there's this, they told me about this study where, you know, the the bees that go out to go, I found more pollen. I'm going to come back and wiggle my ass Mm -hmm. 12 different ways. And then you can go find it. When they spray those bees with like, um, Dyslexicide. Just Dys- well, dyslexic. Prozac. Yes, with uh, things that help you con- like the I don't know what uh, Adderall or whatever. Adderall. They don't leave the nest anymore. Oh, <clears throat> and then oh, once away, interesting. Yeah. So that's that's that'll that I see. I'm better than everyone. See how I turned it into that. <laughs> Bill Superfoot Wallace had an injury to his right knee when he was 21, so he worked his left leg kicks. Mm. And they were clocked at 60 miles an hour. <laughs> and he was a champion, right, uh, Max Zapata? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank Damn. you for that ringing in You guys George. were really... I was, looking at it, I was looking at his early life. Hey, he was a big like, reader growing yeah. up, Joel, so he's yeah. not really <laughs> Yeah, you guys verbal. are going to call me out. Wasn't there a professional kicker with like half a foot that you showed me? Tom Dempsey. Yeah. Or Jack Dempsey. Oh, Tom. Was that that donkey that was in games for a while? <laughs> that was a Oolash or whatever. The Disney mo- that was a Disney movie about the oh, uh, I get those confused. donkey that kicked field goals. That, <laughs> my favorite part of every movie where a donkey kicks a field goal and he's being trot down the field is when the opposing coach is raising hell and then the umpire, the referee goes, you show me in the, show me the rule book. You show me has it where a mule can't kick. It's like they couldn't have foreseen everything. They couldn't. Spirit of the law. Which you know the guy that pitched the movie to the executive was like, I want, bet you're wondering why he's allowed to stay in the game. <laughs> I am. Nothing in the rule book. These are the actual rules of the AFL. It says a full-sized male donkey cannot come out. <laughs> Under that logic, you'd have to include ostriches sure. and emus. A kangaroo. Uh, kangaroos. Like you'd have to cover every yeah. animal on Noah's Ark. It's right? like that famous Cheers episode where Cliff went on... Uh, Jeopardy, and he answered like it was three celebrities, and he answered. He was like, "Who are three people who have not been in my kitchen?" (laughs) (laughs) Which technically he's correct, right? So we have. uh, Did you bring the trumpet mouthpiece in? I don't uh, know what you're talking about. (laughs) And we have a twenty second uh, Joel's pool rant. (laughs) My my nothing. Oh yeah, put that the nothing rant from that. That always reminds me of your former producer Angie. Mm-hmm. Who then you would do what won't Angie eat? Yes, that was the, some of the most fascinating radio because she, she was one of Angie those. Eat it. She was a, yeah, she, yeah. she was one of those people. Is like it'd be like grilled cheese on white toast, and you'd be like, who doesn't eat? There's nobody. I mean, it may not be your favorite sandwich, there's right? No one who but it won't a, eat it, and she's like, uh, uh-uh, uh, no way. And then they. <laughs> that's always funny when they're explaining something that four-year-olds eat for lunch, and then they go, it's so goo. And like they do, they have to, it's like, just admit there's something wrong with you. You melted. Don't, don't try yeah. to talk me out yeah. of grilled cheese. Yeah, does it ever work? I never really thought about the part where it was stretchy. You're right. Yeah, so it's a texture. I'll turn my back on it. <laughs> That's it? This is uh, this is 20 seconds of... This makes me so Inspired happy. by Joel's pool. I was... My house was built in 1929. 
It has no reinforced concrete, no plywood, because plywood wasn't invented, no Simpson straps, no HDs, no hold downs, no all thread, no J bolts, no nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing. There it is. That was, bridge that was, yeah, that was like. We still about three minutes to go there. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's like eight eight minutes. And long. I think Chuck Lindell, uh, Liddell broke in, and then you started doing leg kicks with him. So, <gasps> all right, uh, we got the news coming, but it, it wouldn't be a Joel McHale appearance without uh, me speaking to my dad, having a heart to heart through my <laughs> trumpet, through his trumpet mouthpiece. That's the only way he's able to express emotion. Yes, yeah, he's normally pretty standoffish, and he's not an open book. Mm. Do you want him to join you in the news? Yeah, why don't we'll why don't why way. don't we do that? Why don't we roll into the news and he, uh, my dad, chime via in. the mouthpiece, can chime in. Joel, are you going all over the place on your electric bike? Yes. Is it killer fast? It's the greatest. Kick-ass? Yeah, it's a company called Super Seventy Three. Mm-hmm. Super Seventy Three. Am I? Yeah, I love. So they decided instead of it just being because so many bike companies. I swear to you, I'm not. But. Uh, that it's not just a bicycle. They're like, we're going to make bikes that look like little motorcycles from the 70s, and we're going to make them 200 pounds or something because it's they're going to they're like it's a bike, sure, but it's mostly about the how fast the thing can go and how well it handles. So you can program it to go like 70 miles an hour if you want. Oh right now, mine goes 31 miles an hour because I am I know this is how I'm going to die. Yeah, Do you have one? No, I my son has one. My my daughter. <laughs> fired one up in the uh, in my warehouse and started just like heading at me and couldn't let go of the throttle <laughs> and it was a bad it was a bad it was a bad scene but uh, I will I was saying on the show that this is our modern day sort of three wheelers or ATVs or was I talking about that on this show okay I this all I want to say because I love you Joel I love you is <clears throat> don't die on that thing well all no respect it so, like, I used to ride Ninja, Kawasaki Ninjas and Honda 404s. I had some Enduros and stuff. And it's like you got on it, and you kind of had to respect it. It was heavy. It yeah. was powerful. And people kind of knew it. And the analogy that I was drawing is is when, when, you'd go, when you go out to the desert and ride dirt bike, dirt motorcycles, right, you get on the – Honda 250 or the 400 Kawasaki or whatever, you put your helmet, your boots, your pads, and whatever. But then there would be the, the three-wheeler over here or the ATV thing over here, like the, the trike, you know? And it yeah. just, first off, it didn't fall over. Right. Like a motorcycle a will tell you all you need to know. Mm-hmm. Just let it go. Mm-hmm. It, it falls over, right? And so everyone would get all padded up and get on the get on the motorcycles. And sometimes they ate shit, but they had helmets and elbow pads and leathers yeah. and stuff like that. The ATV guys, guys would be in cutoffs and flip-flops with like a wife beater on. They'd put their kid between their legs and they'd go, here, you hold my beer. And they'd be puttering around and they'd fuck themselves up because it looked so innocuous. Yeah. It was like a bumper car. But a big it, tricycle. But it could bite you. You know what I mean? And to anyone who's out there on a bird scooter or an electric mm-hmm. bicycle or something, it has the word bicycle in it. And it's a scooter, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, everyone's freaked out about a motorcycle, but 30 miles an hour is 30 miles is, an hour, whatever you're on. And if you're on a look, bike, a scooter, or a Harley, yeah. it's still 30 miles an hour. So call up the uh, Super 73 if you don't mind. So just, just show you. it looks like it a motorcycle. With respect is all I'm yeah. saying. I have not wiped out on it, and I'm scared of it. And so I, I, I'm fully aware. I have had enough, uh, a whole side of my family rides motorcycles other side and they've all fucked themselves up so. oh really yeah and i don't want to i was like that's it's always writing you are like are you sure is it really worth the wind, yeah. wind in your hair for the lifetime of pain so anyway yeah so i i always tell my kids because first time i ever had there was motorcycles going in between traffic here in la right mm-hmm. that's all splitting the lanes which is so terrifying i used to do it all the time you can't stop it's once legal. you're on the bike. Yeah, it's legal, but you know why it's legal? Why? Because motorcycles used to not be able to stop in the 20s uh, <laughs> before they had proper neutral when they were, and so they were like they have to keep moving forward so they can go. Through. Oh, the so clutch it, or the centrifugal yeah, clutch or whatever they it had held on for a long time, and now 
So the kids, I'm like, if you see that guy coming up, always check because it's going to be your fault if right. you merge and they're going to be dead or break their back and then you're going to pay for that for the rest of your life. And you're going to pay for that. <laughs> yes. The legal part, I do believe, is you, you're not supposed to go more than twice what the traffic is moving. Okay. So the traffic is going two miles an hour. These guys are going 40 miles an hour. They should be going five miles an hour. It's kind I didn't of, know that. I think that's the rule. But you think LA wouldn't have a rule? I mean, if they just yeah. said, go whatever speed you like in whatever between turns you cars on. that are moving along. What if side mirrors had pain receptors <laughs> and <laughs> souls? Just Soul. imagine how nervous they would be uh, all the time uh, on the 101. Wow, that is heavy, man. Oh God, you should deep. write for the X-Files. I can't be in a writer's room. Oh, that's dyslexic. right. That's right. All right, Gina, what do all we right. got? Well, uh, some very sad news to start things oh, off. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, Hold on. Uh, I'm going to let Adam's uh, dad, dad in here. Yeah, he, he's going to want to weigh in because um, rest in peace, Ivana Trump. Ivana Trump. Yeah, she oh. just passed away. First uh, wife of former President Donald Trump. Died in her Manhattan apartment, 73 years old. Death not considered suspicious. Uh, looks like she probably had uh, some sort of heart incident. Dad, a big Trump I, fan. We never really I, I talked politics. I feel like politics. this is a weird story for me to <laughs> chime in on. This poor woman's dead, and now I'm going... She- Let's All right, go to, to a happy. One. Go to a happy. Okay, start. rest in peace, Ivana. I'll uh, skip the rapist. Uh, <laughs> we got Spacey. Let's talk a little Army Spacey. Hammer. Okay. Whoa, you went. Wait, you skipped Kevin Spacey. I'd love to talk but about Kevin Spacey if Army, it's okay with Adam's that, dad. I, okay. you know, <laughs> I'm just going right Joel, in. Joel, <laughs> I don't know how you feel about wait. Army Hammer's uh, uh, being. Exiled. Yeah, I'm sure Joel's thrilled. That's but, one less type. Yeah, it's uh, working he's out great for me. Tall, Watch both Celebrity fit, Beef on E. Both good looking. Like I feel that's that's going to translate into a couple extra roles that Army could have taken. Yeah. yeah, Army could host a Celebrity Beef. That's right. Oh, Speaking well, of which, just keep your cannibal fantasies check, to a dull uh, roar. My agent hasn't called yet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I did find it when I read that. Finally, got through this to people like he eats people. I'm like, I don't know. I, when I was right, I was like, it's a little creepy, but I was like, he's direct messaging strangers on social media. Are you out of your mind? Mm. Dad, <laughs> I know you, uh, I know you're a big, uh, did you like social network? <laughs> oh, good. I didn't know, I didn't know you saw that. <laughs> my dad playing the trumpet there. Um, big Army Hammer fan? <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you hear about the bad news? <laughs> hey, oh, you didn't hear? <laughs> Oh, he's, uh, I guess you don't keep up on uh, the internet that often. Um, You just kind of hang around and reading books, you know. Yeah, I got a new book coming out. That'll be the sixth one that's not on your shelf. (laughs) Oh, Oh, he's knocked it over. over. I I do say, I I was at your house and, uh, you know, you sit with your back to the bookshelves, but I can see the bookshelves. And I've read a million titles on that bookshelf, but I've never seen one of mine on there. Uh, yeah, I, I understand life is short and there's only so much time in a day, but <laughs> no, no, but spit take. Listen, Dad, I know most of the stuff you read is about philosophers and, you know, theology and things of that nature, psychology. But, you know, I'm considered a pretty funny author. <laughs> No, I no, I'm not. I feel stupid talking about myself that way. But I'm uh, I'm celebrated. I'm I'm celebrated. No, no, I am. No, 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 comedically, comedically. No, I'm I'm comedically, Dad. I'm celebrated. My remember my first book in fifty years, Wallaby Chicks. Yeah, no. I, well, okay. Take my word for it, then. Okay. All right. I wrote a book. <laughs> it was called 50 Years Old Chicks. Beloved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dawson liked oh, it. I read it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's really good. It's yeah. really good. Yeah. Uh, Gina's, Gina's mom. Oh, Gina's she's mom read it twice loves on a cruise. It. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Oh. Seriously. She took it on a cruise. Oh, she did. She is cute. Yeah. She's an attractive oh. woman. But, okay. All I'm saying is, is, this will be my sixth book. It's called Everything Reminds Me of Something. And again, I know you're into psychology and theology, and, 
but I really think you'd get a kick out of my writing. <laughs> okay. So can you try it at least? I mean, just read a few pages and see if it kind of tickles you. Are you but you're busy today? <laughs> you're, you're. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll just leave one. Let me just put one up in the bookshelf. Oh, no? Just let me take one of these Carl Sagan books down here for a second. Or, all right. Okay. Sorry. I won't touch. I won't touch it. Hey, look, you got the Dennis Prager Bible up there, the modern Bible. Come on. That takes up so much room. Uh, all right. I'll just, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just set it on your nightstand. How about that? And then, you know, if the feeling hits, you can read one of my books. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can. Uh, <laughs> he didn't say no. He didn't say no. You were lying. All right, it's a, it's a, it's a step. In, it's a step oh, in the right direction. He has one. He has a book. Oh, he's taking a book. Oh, right. he just pushed oh, it off the table. He pushed it off the table. <laughs> but Dad, here's what I don't understand. My whole life, all you've done is sit on a sofa and read, and you like comedy. Okay. Now, I've written six comedy books now. I've ne <laughs> you've never read. They are. They're funny. I'm not just saying it. Other people say that. I mean, they're good. Yeah, they're, they're really good. clever. I, they're, yeah. All right, all right. Well, hold on. Many times, yeah. Right? yeah. Even if they weren't excellent. <laughs> no, no. I'm not saying they're not. No, I no, no. I'm not saying you're right and that they're not good. I'm saying hypothetically. Hypothetically. Even if they weren't great comedically, still, as a father, you must have some curiosity as to what is between the covers of that book. He's convinced. All right. Let's just agree to do maybe I'll get you the audio book. Maybe you're you and maybe it's like Joel McHale. You know Joel. He's a big oh yes, I know you love his specials. And, oh, 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 brilliant oh, mind. Community, oh, soup. Oh yeah. I I get it. You've never missed an episode of Talk Soup. <laughs> You've no, okay. you never missed an episode of Talk Soup, but did you? <laughs> <laughs> but Dad, did you see the episode I hosted? <laughs> you want to think about it? I think he is thinking about it. Oh, you do. You remember? <laughs> You don't remember. <laughs> but you've seen every episode of Talk Soup and, and the soup, right? And then the live soup. Every every single one of them. But you missed the one episode that I hosted. <laughs> All right, Gina. <laughs> Let's keep going with the news. Oh, I wish we laugh so hard. <laughs> I don't want to add insult to injury, but I just remembered that on one of our cruises, I read Joel McHale's book. Thank oh, you. Thanks for the money. Oh, I can barely read good. my own book on the Audible, and I'm <laughs> ah. not kidding. Did you? Have, do you have to read oh, your? Oh my God! Can't only only because of the magic of Mike Dawson cobbling together the words. Could I pull it off? That is reading your own book, even your own book is brutal. The producer who I did not know must have thought I was a horrible human being, <laughs> worse than I already am. But he was like, "What is wrong?" I would. I was pounding. I was so mad. I was like, these are my own fucking words. I can't even say them. <laughs> I'm telling you, the first time I did my book, I did that same thing. You book the place out in yeah. either the West Hollywood, well, it's either West LA or somewhere in North Hollywood. They have all these windowless sound stages, mm -hmm. place nicely catered. And then they book, you know, three, three hour sessions or, or something, yeah. something like that. It's just a standard how they do it. And you have the engineer and you have like a producer and then you sit there and you have trouble getting through your own book. And it's so 
uncomfortable and weird, and, yeah. and you also want to keep apologizing, <laughs> which I did. Your, and then your, you come angry. It's your point. Just throwing shit. And then, and then the, the grief guy, and denial. The producer, he's like, "Oh, because uh, I worked with Stephen Fry on that ill-fated oh, CBS yeah. sitcom," and he was like, "Oh." He comes in here, <laughs> one take. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He did uh, Harry Potter, and he's like, he just drops in and out of those different dialects without any effort, and he just walks out. <laughs> anyway, yeah. back to you, Joel. <laughs> he's like, all right, try to get through this next <laughs> sentence. Well, Can you if, say the fucking title of the chapter? How about that? If you do another one, come in here, pay Dawson, <laughs> and do it here, because Dawson- you lost me on paying Dawson. We'll walk you right through it, and you can do an hour here and a half hour. The other thing, too, is three-hour session of reading mm-hmm. feels like a fat ass yeah. doing a Tough mutter for me. It's like I, I, I'm yeah. good for 40 minutes, and then I start to come unraveled. It's so taxing, yeah. like, like mentally. When did Dawson go from looking like a surfer to a Burt Reynolds villain? Oh, mm. boy. Yeah. What was I that? swear, every Good time it's like, there's that surfer dude, and he talks like this. It's cool. Maybe I'll quit smoking someday. And now he... He's one of the townies at the bar <laughs> yeah. where Bert pulls up yeah. into, and they don't, they don't like your on. kind there. He's yeah. going to run you off the road in his A2 wheeler. You know, <laughs> 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 Very funny, guys. You know, all I could think of, Joel, when I was doing my <laughs> audio book for the first book, Mackenzie Phillips... Mackenzie Phillips, yeah. ...had... A book come out about that time. It must have been, let's see, 2009, 2008, 2010, or something Some like revelations. that. Revelations. And she was, I saw her on Oprah talking about having consensual adult sex with her father. <laughs> and get, get the mouthpiece. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized well, she, she was plugging a book, yeah. and this was all in the book. And so as I was recording my audio book. Oh, my gosh. Her book was called High on Arrival from oh, 09, same time I did my book. I found myself sitting in there going, Mackenzie Phillips must have to read her audio book. <laughs> <laughs> and then she has two strangers. Because, Joel, you feel felt like you are being judged? How about the part where you just walk us through having consensual sex with your father where there's an engineer and a fucking guy looks like Dawson sitting there just fucking looking at you. And then he took my hand and he placed it oh, in his crotch. Jesus Christ. What the fuck? But what if it was like a real fastidious producer who was like, hey, that was great, great Mackenzie. Like, hey, do you, I, you kind of flubbed thigh a little bit. It kind of sounded like Thai. Yeah. Like a, but so if you could go back and get that again. You look through glass at people. And like I said, it's weird enough when you're telling some weird high school story about your buddy Ray throwing shit at your head or something. But it's one thing when you're having consensual sex with your father. Here's a line from the book. Oh. Oh, no. I woke up that night from a blackout to find myself having sex with my own father. Through the class. You know what I'd Mr. have Girl. to do? <laughs> What's the next Army Hammer story you got? You know what, what I would do, Joel? What a gift. I would implement this. <laughs> when confronted, he said, raped you? Don't you mean we made love? Oh, my God. She was staring at guys through glass while re- strangers. You know what I would do? Gina? What? Uh, down at Santa Anita, <laughs> when a horse takes a tumble, they got to put her down, <laughs> out comes the sheet. That's right. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the partition. I and thought when you there's were... a fatality on a motorcycle on the 101, <laughs> they right. put the screen out. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And when there's a horrific F1 <laughs> crash and the guy's mangled in the car, they the screen comes yeah. out. That's yeah. too much. I'm saying you go through the book. You know, where you grow up, you go, I grew up in a small city outside of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and had a typical young life. Yeah, that's fine. But then the part where you're fucking your dad, that's where the curtain. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just, Everybody's And that's where the producers that. can't see you as you're reading the audio book. <laughs> I, do they want to see, you, you know what I mean? It, two things. First, when you start going to Santa Anita, I'm like, what's he going to say here? <laughs> I fucked the horse. <laughs> yeah. 
But then the second thing is, sex with a horse. I, as you know, I've done okay, and I will pay you quite a sum of money for you to read Mackenzie Phillips' entire book out loud. Oh, Dawson, this is our next project. I and I guarantee Mackenzie Phillips (laughs) needs the money. If we pay for the rights for the book. And, you know, you want Dawson to quit smoking, but at that point when Mackenzie starts getting into consensual sex, you're like, I'm just going to go ahead and have a smoke. Take the edge off. I'm just going to take the potentiometer. I'll leave it on seven. The board pretty much runs itself. He'll do one of those world's record photos where the guy smokes 100 (laughs) cigarettes at once. Lights it up the other way. Lights them all up. (laughs) Oh! That is you. I, that is something you probably did not expect would happen on your book tour. Like I'm on this tour, I, I'm do, I'm making the same rounds as this woman right now. Did well. First off, she <laughs> did she read her own audio book? Let's find that out. Or was it like a not a weird one like James Brolin? <laughs> <laughs> Is Mackenzie Phillips, you know what I mean? Which is still going to be weird. Jack Wagner. Jack Wagner. It's like, it's still going to be weird, yeah. but at least you wouldn't have to do it. Yeah, relive that over and over again. Wonder, I maybe they, I, maybe they just had like a voice actor do it. Yeah. Who gets to, and could you imagine getting that? Well, good news. That's right. We got you another gig. Oh, thank God. Mm-hmm. It's so dry lately on the on the. Uh, Did you find out? Yeah, I, I didn't find out yet. Okay. Uh, it's narrated by Mackenzie Phillips. Yes! It had to have been, right? Where's the sheet? (laughs) Bring out. Can you buy that real quick? Oh, my God. Yeah, sure. You know what the other screen I love? In the NFL, when somebody hurts their leg and they just pull that tent over now. Yes, yes. The blue tent. I want that blue tent for so many things. I will have one for the next audio book. (laughs) A dump in a public restroom is where I want to use it. Yeah. Oh, Mackenzie read it. Well, anyway, that's all I can think you, about when I, I was recording. So you've written six books. Yes. What is Mackenzie's follow-up book? I mean, what's the next book? Yeah, next she, bombshell. I've infiltrated Corolla Soul is probably the name <laughs> of it oh, I because would. I can't stop. I could not sit in that recording studio and not stop thinking about her. I think we commented on this because we were, I think uh, when we were doing the suit, was like, do we make fun of this? And I was like, well, she is in the public <clears> eye <throat> and it's out there. Because remember, people didn't believe her. I think her dad was like, that didn't happen. Yeah. That's like saying, I have anal warts. Oh, get out. <laughs> it's like, why would I? Why would I announce why it? Why would I announce why? it? You don't. It seems weird. Yeah. All right. One more, Gina Grant. Well, do you want me to tell you the Army Hammer story? Oh, the Army Hammer. Yeah. Time <laughs> Again, time skip shared. the Kevin Spacey I- one. Right. I'm happy to do the Kevin Spacey one. Yes, do the okay, Kevin Spacey one. Okay, fine. Uh, disgraced actor. Kevin Spacey was in a London court Thursday and entered a not guilty plea on four. Oh, he played Bobby Darren. Yeah. Oh, when the show yeah. yeah the Dad, you Back love that kind of. That's your. Uh, that's your. Uh, uh, that's Shark Bay. And that's he was the, killed, right? Was he. Bobby Darren, yeah. He, di- or he, he died. He, he, he had died. Cancer, I think. Yeah. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry. Yes, yeah, so uh, he uh, he did plead not guilty for incidents of alleged sexual assault. The most serious charge of rape would result in a life sentence if Spacey's convicted. He's always maintained his innocence. Meanwhile, Spacey's no longer involved with that film I told you about, about the life of Genghis Khan because of this. It's called 1242 Gateway to the West. It's this historical drama about a holy man that tries to stop one of Genghis Khan's armies from invading Europe. Spacey was set to play the holy man, but the wow. movie's producers tell Variety that Spacey has been replaced, a new lead will be revealed. If well, no, he will stand trial next year in the UK, next June, and uh, the trial is expected to last three to four weeks, and he could be sentenced to a life sentence. Jesus Christ. It's you know who so his spokesperson is? Hmm. Mackenzie Phillips. Oh, no, my God. I did not know really that. Weird. Think about she that. She reads all that stuff. It's, so there were, the pr- movie producers were okay with all the other... Well, the, it's, the rape charges it's, from before. It's very interesting how it's worded. Nobody claims to have kicked him off the project. He stepped down. He's being replaced. But a little murky as to uh, as to who asked him to leave or if he was asked to leave. How, or maybe he just finds himself to be a little busy right now. How are we in these days males um, sexually assaulting males versus females? I feel like. How we're, are we? They can both be penetrated. I'm oh. saying, I feel we're le- oh, dead. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not saying we're good. I'm saying. I'm sorry, I didn't know I took. Less it. tolerant, probably, of men doing it to women. A little bit, men doing it to men have caught up but quite a bit. N- let me, let me. I think he did it to a minor. That's what I was going to say. Mm. Men doing it to boys. Mm. 
love that's that where band. we're at. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then he did that thing in the in the New York court where he did his character from the Netflix show. Yeah. House of Cards. So oh, yeah. he came in in character. Yeah. Which and then was, was a very weird, odd move. Risky. He was doing monologues in his kitchen and like, is this Kevin Spacey? Is this his character? He was doing monologues on the steps of the uh, museum in Italy. He's just going nuts it then, sounds right? Like it. Mm-hmm. And, and he was beloved. Would uh, Lou Pearlman, who was <laughs> uh-huh. the pedophile... Who did all the boy bands? And all did he that. do boys to men? I don't think I, so. I think it was way before his time. No, and that's the wrong coast. I don't think it was before <clears throat> it was time. It wasn't before his time because they, they were all have... those boy bands were all hitting at the same. time. You think time. boys to men hitting at the same time as in sync? Yeah. I'd say well, at ninety-eight no, degrees, like ten years. Well, but Lou Pearlman was old enough. I thought to... he was like in a video game. I thought he was like doing arcade games or something. Damn. Lou Pearlman? Yeah, I thought he oh. how he made his fortune or some shit. Yeah, oh, but he started producing later on. Okay. I'm I just don't... saying, Ooh. I really don't know a ton. He died in prison, but oh. he Shocker. wouldn't name a band Boys to Men, right? Because too, it'd be a little too, too close. On the nose. Too, yeah. on the, too on the nose. Yeah, for him, him, right? Right? exactly. <clears throat> mm-hmm. And I don't think that's what he went to prison for, right? He went to prison for like defrauding his boys. Yeah, embezzlement. Oh, did he? Right? I thought, well, he oh. also he, they I caught the him duck. in a. I think they caught him in Thailand or something. Oh, they, they tracked him. That's there. never uh, good to be caught in Thailand. I thought it was a, of a sexual but, nature. But Brian, am I? Because there was a doc, or you probably saw it. Wasn't he in prison for like stealing from the kids from yeah. shorting their paychecks? I can't specifically say. Oh, okay. Sorry. Ponzi scheme. So nah. says uh, mm-hmm. Chris. He seems yeah. like he was fun. Money laundering. Seems like a fun guy. Mm-hmm. I would narrate his book. I don't know if he has a book. <laughs> Again, I'm contacting Mackenzie Phillips. And, oh my god! And then I just <laughs> like when you, did you did you order her book, Chris? Yeah, the the, the chapter's five hours long. I'm, I'm having start trouble it, finding it. Yeah. Start uh, it from the beginning. My friends who watched me tape my book, they were like, "You should put out a version of the audio book where you leave in all the mistakes of you reading your own book." 27 oh, hour audio. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucking screaming. Well, and I think one of Adam's little tricks is it's not a word for word. It's more fun to read, to listen to the book because it's not the same. I will I will tell you my first book. Oh, I don't know. Somebody can look. We'll give you the answer tomorrow. But if my first book had f- 16 chapters, I only got to nine of them. That's awesome. Because I was so busy <laughs> ranting and railing about Mackenzie Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> that I literally missed entire chapters. This latest book, I just read it as as it was. But the first book was two thirds <laughs> as written, and the other third was me just ha- complaining about the soda can. You that was probably next could to just me. go. I have a book. It's only on Audible, and just talk for. Yeah, I, you, I, they, I, the they first, would be perfectly fine with the that. The first book probably was that way. All right, let's bring it home, Gina Gray. I think that's a good what idea. Fun, <laughs> wait, we never got to the Army Hammy one. Army yeah. oh, yeah. Hammy? Can, you want mm-hmm. me to just give you the beats mm-hmm. of Army? Well, what was the conclusion? Well, there, okay, I didn't even get to this story last week because it was basically they said that somebody at the at the at this hotel in the Cayman Islands pulled this prank on him and put this picture on a thing that he was like the concierge now at this mm-hmm. Cayman Islands resort. Eh, okay, whatever. Well, now the rumor is he is working uh, as a uh, timeshare salesman in the Cayman Islands, and there's an insider that claims he has a little cubicle. He's working there selling timeshares. Uh, he's true. totally broke. And trying to fill his days to earn money and support his family because his because his wife and kids moved to the Cayman Islands. He's, so he's from to, a billionaire family, he's but a, he's not on that Arm and Hammer payroll. Apparently, is that that's, his? That's, that's that's what Variety is reporting. I don't think that's his family because when no, we Armand, look into that, Armand Hammer, right. his grandfather, not Arm and Hammer, the baking soda. Right, is, is Armand a rich guy? Yeah, he was oh, an oil okay. tycoon. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that it, he is related to him, but maybe the, didn't the, the fortune like skip a, the generation? Uh, seems like there's a lot of hoops to jump over to get to cubicle and the Cayman Islands. <laughs> I agree. So, I saw on TMZ like they have pictures <laughs> of him selling stuff, walking in and out. Really? Uh, well, we do this thing all the time where it's like that guy who was on the uh, Cosby Show in uh, right. 1989. He works at a Trader Joe's. What's going on? It's like. Well, he had a job on TV, mm-hmm. and it's now been 31 years, and now he works 
And the same job you have, motherfucker, yeah, and yeah. your dad had, and your brother has. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's so embarrassing. He's got a job. Yeah, guess guess all the we people all that are jobs. laughing have mm-hmm. have jobs. Regular people have jobs. How and are, if, sitcoms don't last for 122 seasons. You, you get three in, and then they're not, mm-hmm. and now uh, you get a job. That was another big thing with Brian <clears throat> Dunkelman as an Uber driver, and he's like, "I gotta fucking pay my bills. What do you want from me?" I did. I will. I will. Wow. <clears throat> I will spare his name, but a fairly well-known stand-up comedian. Who is it? Uh, what does it rhyme it, with? It, it, you, you would know it. I can't even think of it uh, right now, like honestly. But you would know it if you're a comedian and you were around since the 80s and the 90s. Like a pretty well-known name. And I was walking through my neighborhood and I have a nice neighborhood and there's nice houses and stuff like that. See this car come pulling in. It's kind of a, a little bit of a junker car. But um, but I go, oh, it seems like a kind of weak car. It's a $8 million house and a $22,000 car. It's like, eh. And then he gets out of the car, and I'm like, oh, hey, man. And he's like, oh, hey, man. And I'm like, oh, hey, welcome to the neighborhood. So you, this is a sweet place here. And he goes, he dropped off he goes I'm, a, I'm a dog walker. Oh, oh. no. He goes, I come here to get the dog. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, you're not. Doing, you're not on a sitcom. You're not headlining. You're not doing Netflix specials. You you got to work. Yeah, and and that's you, the thing that, with Arm and ha- Army Hammer. If you are <laughs> virtually unemployable and you live in the Cayman Islands, like why not sell some timeshares? Yeah, and I will say when the wheels come off of my showbiz career wagon, I shall go back to Carpenter, which is very noble. Mm, true. And no one will very look noble. down their nose at me. Biblical. Yeah. It's biblical. That's right. That's, that's exactly right. right. Dad, if, if something, you know, I'm, I'm in show business. No, I am. Well, uh, yeah, just because you don't have cable doesn't mean people don't know who I am. Anyway, I've been, I've been, you know, been making a living in show business for uh, couple, coming on 30 years now. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. Writing books, <laughs> cable shows, uh, being celebrated, celebrated. We get it. Yeah. yeah, okay. And, you know, if I have to go back to carpentry, then, uh, then so be it. But I don't see any chance of that, not with my ability. Yeah, no, I'm... Uh, I'm good. With no, Joel McHale told me that he's. Oh, no, Joel, Mc, yeah, he's fine. He's okay. No, he's, he's, he's funny. He's not funny, funny like I am, but he's funny. No, I know he's good. Oh, I see you got his book in your bookshelf there. Oh, yeah, super funny. All right, now listen. He said he talked to people. They would listen to Loveline, and they would say, "Your son." He thinks in punchlines. That's what the comedians would say. Joel, Joel McHale told me that he thought I was super funny. He was a big fan of Loveline. Yes, that Joel McHale from the soup. <laughs> All right, I, I know. I feel like you have to sit down now, Dad. Your mind is blown. Process. Why don't you? Get a nice cup of postum and oh. read through Joel McHale's book. <laughs> he fell asleep. All right, let's bring it home, Gina Grant. You got it. I'm Gina Grant, and that's the news. I'm better than everyone. Gina, Gina Grant. That was the news with Gina Grant. That was almost four stories. Well, last but not least, there's the Jordan Harbinger Show, a different kind of sponsor for this episode, the Jordan Harbinger Show. If you're a fan of fascinating podcasts with interesting people, you should definitely check it out. There's an episode for everyone, no matter what you're into. Jordan talks to Scott Adams about persuasion in a world where facts don't matter, or you can go inside the dark world of wildlife trafficking. You'll always find something useful to apply to your own life, like routine changes to boost your productivity or slight mindset tweaks to change 
how you see the world. How would you have read that 30 years ago? <laughs> Impossible. Yeah, I, I was just thinking, like, you fucking nailed that read. Well, I'm speaking from the heart, though, because I do know Jordan, and he is a good is guy. Is his real name, last page. name Harbinger? Jordan mm-hmm. Harbinger. That's very cool. H-A-R-B is in boy, I-N is in Nancy, G-E-R on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to finer podcasts. It's the Jordan Harbinger Show. Joel McHale, everyone. Right. Wait, Celebrity. is that it? Are we done? Is it done now? Celebrity yeah. beef. On August E. I'm back on, on e. e. Please come, Adam. I would love to be on that show. And uh, you and Kevin Smith got to go on. Oh, we my go God. Make a souffle together. They have a beef. famous beef. Old oh, school beef. Great. Star, great. Star Girl, by the way, season three premieres August 31st on the CW. Yes, I couldn't have done that a few years ago either. And until next time, this, oh, me, Springfield, Missouri, Blue Room Comedy Club. Uh, tonight and tomorrow night, as you hear this, two shows. Kyle Dunnigan's going to be oh, on. Oh, you're going to be there tomorrow. Or- Saturday. Just go to AdamCurl.com for all the live shows. Until next time, Adam Curl for Joel McHale, Gina Grant, and Bob Bryan. <laughs> Say it. <laughs> Mahalo. I'll just, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just set it on your nightstand. How about that? And then, you know, if the feeling hits, you can read one of my books. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can. Uh... <laughs> he didn't say no. He didn't say no. You were laughing. All right. It's a, it's a, it's a step, it's a step oh, in the right direction. He has, he has a book. Oh, he's taking a book. Oh, he just oh, pushed it off the table. Oh, he pushed it off the table. 